Live from the kingdom in Seattle, Washington, an interconference battle, the Phoenix Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan here at the kingdom, and today we've got the Seattle Seahawks, champions of the West Division of the AFC last year, who lost their opener to Philadelphia 31-7. The Cardinals, on the other hand, who lost their last five games last season, got off to a good start with a win over Detroit. Joining me in the broadcast booth, making his debut as a young man who made his football debut right here in the kingdom back a few years ago, three-time Pro Bowler Randy Cross. Nice to have you here, Randy. And Thank you, Let's Tim. talk a little football about the Seattle Seahawks, who got behind early last week against the Eagles, but never recovered. They're not a catch-up offense. They're a very methodical offense. The key to them is really running the ball well. It's always been Kurt Warner here in Seattle. Last week, he had 47 yards. The man on the ground now for Seattle is John L. Williams. Well, they hope to run the ball against a batter defense of the Cardinals. The Cardinals won last week, but it was a costly win in a battle. They hope they haven't lost the war already. Head coach Gene Song said he's tired of hearing about who he doesn't have. What he does have is a great offensive line. He feels that line's got to control the ball 35 to 37 minutes of this game. He's got Gary Hogaboom. The team's got lots of confidence in Hogaboom. And he also has in J.T. Smith and Roy Green, the best veteran combination receivers in the league. All right, and so the Seahawks will kick it off, and the Cardinals will have the ball first. Norm Johnson is the kicker. The deep men are by Sikahama and Ernie Jones. Jones on the near side, number 86. Norm Johnson, who can kick that high kickoff, gives his men a real good opportunity to get downfield early and prevent kickoff returns. And the Seahawks crowd, well known for their noise level, comes alive on the opening play. From the goal line, Sikahema. To the 33 yard line, but a flag down. A good return by Vi Sikahema, the specialist of the Cardinals in that department. And Eugene Robinson made the tackle, but a flag down on the play. Illegal contact, push in the back, number 58 on the return. Referee Pat Haggerty making the call, charged against the Cardinals. That is Eric Hill, the rookie, getting the penalty. And Gary Hogaboom, working in place of the injured Neil Lomax, gone for the year, trying to take over this job, will play behind this offensive front. Sharp Pete Kennard, Smith, rookie Joe Wolf for the injured Tootie Robbins and Robert A. Wall. Mitchell and Wolfley for the injured Earl Farrell. Green, Smith, and the receivers you will see frequently, Ernie Jones and Jay Novacek. So from the 10-yard line, Phoenix first down. Close to a first down at the 20, Roy Green, as Hogaboom rifled that ball right on target. Checks for the signals for the next play. Defensively, Seattle in their basic 3-4, Green, Nash, and Brett. Jeff Bryant, a veteran, defensive front. Young Rufus Porter outside with free agent Vernon Maxwell, Bosworth and Wyman inside, and a juggled secondary this year. Harper and Jenkins, two new cornerbacks. Johnny Johnson coming over from the Rams, now the free safety, along with Nesby Glasgow. On second down, Hogaboom to throw again, and whistles everywhere. Ron Wolfley caught the ball, but it looks like they'll bring that back, a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Melvin Jenkins on the coverage. False start, number 80, offense. Robert Ewald charged with a false start. That's one of the cases where a tight end, and there is, there is Ewald right there. He's got to stay in to pass protect. He's trying to get a little bit of a jump on that defensive end and anticipated the count a little bit too soon. Well, the Cardinals have come out throwing here, Randy. Well, uh, Gene Stallings said he wanted to really establish his running game, but he is without Earl Farrell. Ron Wolfley, number 24, is starting at fullback for Farrell, and that's a big loss for the Cardinals. First and 15 now for Phoenix. Ewald in motion, They're running from the eye, Mitchell. Mitchell gets back five for the, maybe six, close to the 21-yard line for the veteran number 30. And an update on the game some of you were watching earlier. Washington now 37 to 28, a shocker there on the fourth quarter. 
The Redskins with a big early lead in the first half against a team that many, myself included, think could be a Super Bowl team, the Eagles. Well, Buddy Ryan signed it before the game like he was ready to go. He was going to break that RFK jinx. So far, it doesn't look like he will. Second down and nine. Mitchell in motion. Hogaboom finds Mitchell. Pushed out of bounds, dancing along the sideline at the 30. Trying to get the first down. We'll see where they spot it. But a flag down back in the backfield. Nesby Glasgow had the coverage. A little roughing the passer right there on Seattle. Seattle knows they have to get after Hogaboom if he is going to be back there throwing. They've got to get to him. That's been a problem in the past with Seattle. They're not a Personal strong. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 15. Defense, first down. They're not real, real strong at going after that quarterback. And you saw Vernon Maxwell, the free agent out of Arizona State, was guilty of the penalty right there. A severe penalty all the way to the 45-yard line, Randy. This is a good pass protecting job right at the end. Vernon Maxwell, no reason to come in. Looked like he might have been guilty of a headshot. Aaron Stump Mitchell tiptoes into a first down. First, I mean, penalty or not, he had it. But instead, they're at the 45-yard line of Phoenix. Mitchell straight ahead. What a hit on him. He got about two, but he was really straightened up by Nesby Glasgow, number 22, the strong safety. Nesby Glasgow has always been a person throughout his NFL career, never hesitates to come up there and hit. And that's something Rod, Rod Perry, the defensive back coach for the Seattle Seahawks, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't feel bad about it. Watch Glasgow, number 22, is just going to fill up. Nobody blocks him. You never allow for a safety like this in your blocking scheme. If someone can get into that quick, they can be very effective in stopping down a real good run game. Second and seven. Wide open is Roy Green. Touchdown, Cardinals. Hogaboom hits Roy Green, a 51-yard scoring strike, and he was in full tilt when he caught the ball, ran away from the secondary, and the Cardinals jump into an early lead on their opening drive. This is a wake-up call for all you Seattle Seahawks out there. I think they were very, very confident. They were favored coming into this game, and this is the, a great example of a team that's been down. They've had injuries. They're very much optimistic. And Gene Stallings has got this team really believing in itself. And you can't ask for a better way to start than have a Roy Green 51-yard touchdown reception. And this is one of the true quality guys in the league. Now Del Greco for the point after. It's blocked. Well, the Seahawks give themselves a little bit of a lift after the sudden scoring strike to Roy Green. If there's one signature, if you could carry over through the last 14 years of this franchise, it's always been special teams. They've always had high quality special teams here in Seattle and their coach, Rusty Tillman, as would indicate right here with a block kick, is willing to keep that tradition up. Here we have Roy Green. Roy and J.T. Smith coming into this game both had great games last week. Here we go, six for 130 for four touchdowns was last time he played against Seattle. Hogaboom gets the time. It's just a crossing pattern. Seattle steps up, bites on any kind of play action fake, and Roy Green here just outruns. Jenkins never really had a chance from the sideline. It looked like he was closer than he really was. Green was very confident talking with us uh, last night when he arrived here. You had the feeling that uh, he was ready for a big game uh, like what they had seen on the game tapes and uh, came in here feeling uh, that he was going to have himself a good afternoon. What an early start. And there's a happy face. He really seemed to be kind of licking his chops last night. Yes, he did. He knows he's got a reconstructed defensive backfield for the Seattle Seahawks. He's got a good, good offense that can strike, and it's really a key for them to get some points on the board. Next time they get the ball, they would like not to strike quite so quick, though. They've got to hold on to the ball and keep the Seattle offense off the field with this battered Phoenix defense. Meanwhile, they'll take the 7-0 lead and Del Greco's kickoff. James Jefferson and Elroy Harris, the deep men. It's Harris. Harris gets out to the 32-yard line. And David Craig will bring on the Seahawks offense for the first time today. 15-34 last week in the losing cause. Trying to play catch-up ball after they got behind early against the Eagles. His offensive front 
Includes the rookie at left tackle, Andy Heck, an otherwise experienced line, Grant Fiesel replacing the departed Blair Bush at center, and rookie Robert Tyler, really a first-year man, but he didn't play last year at all, replacing Mike Tice. Steve Largen out of action, and Tommy Kane moves in there along with Lewis Clark, replacing Largen as the starter. On first down, Warner for about four yards. The Cardinals defensively, Four-man front, none. Clasby, the rookie Jim Waller, with Sadler moving outside to replace the injured David Galloway, who was hurt, suffering a broken thumb last week. Bell, rookie Eric Hill, the number one pick, and Ken Harvey. Three number ones, all young linebackers. Mack and Carter on the corners. Michael Zordich for the injured Lonnie Young. And a long afternoon for Tim McDonald. What a dispute here on second down as they broke the huddle. And here's one thing Phoenix does not need to see is another injury to a, to a defensive player. Rookie Eric Hill out of LSU was just now starting to pick this defense up better and better as the weeks went by, and he seems to be hobbled a little bit. Well, they were trying to make a substitution for Hill, who apparently was trying to limp off, and the uh, Seahawks got the play going. Lewis Clark took the ball uh, all the way to the end zone, but the play uh, had been already whistled dead. So it may be an extra man on the field uh, penalty upcoming. We'll wait and see what Pat Haggerty and his crew sort out. And we're looking at some of uh, the finals and late scores in from earlier this afternoon in the NFL. Look at that, 41 to 10. Pittsburgh taking it on the chin again. Kansas City and Steve DeBerg up on top of the L.A. Raiders. This AFC West division is called weak. I think really it's about the most competitive division in the in the NFL. It's not that they're weak. It's just everybody has it out for each other. Chuck Knox, everybody knows he's a longtime winner, and he is a motivator. He's been, uh, he's been on this team this week. After losing that game 31-7 to Philadelphia and being accused of laying down, Chuck doesn't like that. Well, Phoenix wound up taking a timeout. There were no infractions on the play, and it's second and five Seahawks. John L. Williams. Good piece of running. First down, Seattle. Tim McDonald and Ilya Jaroschuk, who came in for Eric Hill at middle linebacker, made the tackle. John L. Williams is one of those backs. You don't really know how fast he's moving, because at his size, I mean, you look at a guy that's 5'11", 230 yards or so. And that's last week's stats, 6 for 24. Obviously, Philadelphia got on top of them, and they couldn't really spend much time running the ball. But John L. Williams has got very good speed. He's an excellent receiver, a good blocking back, and the Seahawks think he's the best all-around fullback in the NFL. First down, Seahawks. Kurt Warner for about seven. Finding a hole out the left side. Ken Harvey, the linebacker, stopped him. Running behind Bailey and Heck. I think Kurt Warner is resigned to the fact it's not a one-back team anymore. It's two-back. Watch the middle linebacker, your right chuck here. Center Grant Fusel blocks back. Edwin Bailey comes around and gets a great block on him. Ken Harvey folds back around from his linebacker position and makes the stop on Warner. So it leaves a second and about four. This is Williams. Stopped short of the first down. Another flag down. Thrown at the line of scrimmage. John L. Williams, as the Seattle coaches described him, is a pile mover. He's the type of running back can run right into the back of the offensive lineman who's blocking on the defensive lineman. And he'll get three yards just from his momentum. But I was mentioning earlier about Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner is the kind of running back that's been used to carrying the load, and it's not like that anymore here at Seattle. He's got John L. to take some pressure off him. Offsides, defense, first down. Well, he didn't uh, put the finger on anybody, but it looked uh, to us like it might have been Rod Sadler. Got to be pretty excited about getting a start. Sadler jumps a little bit and just gets enough into that the neutral zone, as they, as they refer to it, is the zone that the defense cannot penetrate before the snap. Yeah, I think uh, looking at it there, it might have been Freddie Joe Nunn uh, with Sadler right behind him. So in any event, they didn't make the announcement. Loose ball on the snap. 
Looks like Seattle has it, but it never got into the hands of Craig. Instead, it was Ron Mattis, who, or Brian Millard, the right guard, who came up with the ball. You know, Seattle's got a new center, really. It's a guy, last, they had Blair Bush last year, he's banged up, Grant Fiesel, number 54 here in the left center of your screen, comes off the ball real quick. Dave Craig never gets it, it comes right up behind Fiesel's rear end, and Craig's still looking for it. Luckily, Millard, number 71, finds it. He's a tough guy, you're not getting a ball away from Brian Millard. That's a ball bounced right to him off the artificial turf. And he did better than the running back did on that play. Warner stopped by Clasby. It'll leave third down, no gain on the play. Clasby, a great, solid veteran from Notre Dame. One of those guys, he, he compare, I'd compare him to Mike Fanning, who used to play for the Los Angeles Rams, who I played against a lot. He's big, he's physical, and very, very steady, as Coach Stallings says. He's a guy who doesn't make many mistakes, and really, as Stallings said, he plays a little better than you really expect him to. So the Seahawks have a third and seven, Randy, and the six defensive backs are in now for Phoenix. Jay Taylor and Roland Mitchell joining the regular foursome and four wideouts for Seattle. Craig from the shotgun. He is sacked and the ball is loose. Seattle recovers. Ken Harvey got the hit on Craig. There's Andy Heck, the rookie out of Notre Dame. Ken Harvey said he saw a few things on the film that he could take advantage of Andy Heck and his inexperience. Ken Harvey, good, quick, number 56 on the right-hand side of your screen, hits Heck, brings him up field. Craig tries to come up inside. That's, you can't blame an offensive lineman for that. He does not know where the quarterback's gonna, gonna scramble to, and that's great instincts in the, on, the, on the case of Mr. Harvey here, number 56. He just came off at the right time to make the snap. So the punt from Ruben Rodriguez. And it's five and is down near the three yard line by Seattle. Rufus Porter, the linebacker number 97. Last year's AFC Pro Bowl special teams player now getting a lot more playing time starting for the Seattle defense. 44-yard punt by Rodriguez and a fine job by Rufus Porter. He got the start at outside left linebacker today, and they think he's going to develop into a real fine one. He's not one of the biggest guys you'd ever want to see. I mean, heck, he's only 6'1", 220 pounds, but Chuck Knox loves his heart. He says Rufus Porter is a guy that will go to the wall for you. So the Phoenix Cardinals start from their four-yard line, leading seven to zip. But starting in a hole. Mitchell. Mitchell eludes two tacklers and gets up to the 13-yard line. Well, for an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Tim, here it is. It put the Eagles back in the game for a few seconds. But Gerald Riggs has just exploded. He didn't score, but Riggs has rushed for 213 yards today. And now the Skins have a chance to score again. About a minute to go. Let's go back to Tim. Wow, what a day for Gerald Riggs. <laughs> Over 200 yards. Redskins looking like they made a real steal. Second down here, about two. And a mix up <laughs> in the play, and you've got Hogerboom talking to Ewald. That brings flags everywhere. They may have used up the clock. Well, there were still four seconds showing. All start, number 68. Well, they got a false start out of it uh, from the rookie Joe Wolf at right tackle and Tootie Robbins spot. But there was confusion from the get go there as uh, Ewald looked like he came over to say, hey, what are we, what play are we running here, there, uh, Gary? There are better places to argue about what the snap's on, which way you're supposed to go in motion, than right behind the line of scrimmage with about 10 seconds left in the 30 <laughs> second clock. You know, we'll get a chance later to see. Gary Hogebaum has a little cheat sheet on his wrist. The plays are signaled in and their numbers on his wrist corresponding to the plays he's going to call. So I'll leave the second and seven. Mitchell. Stump Mitchell to the 21 yard line. Melvin Jenkins and Nesby Glasgow on the stop. That that big offensive line. 
I mean, you look at this from the end zone. Looks like a drive-in movie screen, all those white pants there. Great job. Derek Kennard comes around, makes a good block, and Stump Mitchell seems like he's been with the Cardinals forever, ever since they were in St. Louis. He runs hard, and he's got that instinct that only the great runners have. He can spin him around. He still knows where the opponent's goal line is, and that's the direction he's going to head. Ninth year, and running hard today. This time, stop at the line of scrimmage. Mitchell had 52 yards on 18 carries last week, coming off the shoulder surgery in the offseason. Well, a final now, Atlanta over Dallas. The Cowboys take their second defeat, and Cleveland on top of the Jets in the fourth period. Cincinnati beating up on the Steelers, and Miami over New England, 24 to 10. That's final, and look at this. Green Bay defeating the Saints by a point. Second down, eight. Hogeboom almost picked off. He had a good rush on him, and Vernon Maxwell had a better shot at it than the intended receiver Mitchell, mainly because of a good pass rush by the Seahawks. David Wyman, the linebacker, number 92, led the charge. Giants just underway against Detroit, a field goal up. Gary Hogeboom said linebackers like Dave Wyman and Brian Bosworth make his job a little easier to sell a play action pass because they're so aggressive they'll bite on a fake and Dave Wyman on that play was was blitzing but couldn't quite get there in time. Hogeboom takes a good look he's up under now he's back in the shotgun again some confusion Novacek waved into motion. Hogeboom finds J.T. Smith first down Cardinals out to the 47 yard line. That looked like a Sandlot situation, and Hogaboom pulled it off. And Hogaboom would tell you right now, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to confuse them. We're supposed to look like we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I tell you, Hogaboom had a great game last week. He's off to a good start here, and one of the reasons he's playing so well, he's getting good protection. Rufus Porter hits him late, but these two wide receivers, J.T. Smith and Roy Green, you can't ask for better wide receivers. I don't care how old these guys are. They're playing like they're 22 instead of 32, 33. J.T. Smith is 33. Roy Green is 32. And Hogaboom's four for five. First down from the 47. And a makeshift play. Mitchell hit up the line of scrimmage. Rufus Porter, number 97. Second year man from Southern. Made the Pro Bowl last year as a rookie on the specials team. And uh, as you heard Randy say earlier, Chuck Knox a high on this young guy, and he is a starter here today. He loves the way this guy plays, and he'll play in a lot of special teams normally. He's been a little banged up with a bad hamstring, but if in a normal circumstance, he'd start, he'd be on the punt team, punt return, kickoff, kickoff return. He's just sort of the heart and soul right now of this, this Seattle Seahawks special team unit. Second down, about 10 and a half. Jefferson and Hunter into the secondary for Seattle, along with linebacker Tony Woods, number 57. Mitchell, again, nowhere to run. Make it uh, Tony Jordan. Ball carrier, number 32, second-year man from Kansas State. Tim Ryan and Randy Cross here at the Kingdom. We've got five minutes, a little under now, remaining in the first period. And Phoenix on top, six to nothing. The extra point blocked by the Seahawks after a 51-yard scoring strike. Hogaboom to Roy Green. Thus far, the Cardinals have taken advantage of a not inexperienced defensive backfield for the Seahawks but one that isn't used to playing together, and it shows. Hogaboom with three receivers lined up to the left, and now Green goes in motion to the right. And early movement across the line, Jacob Green, and flags everywhere. Let's see if he was drawn. Encroachment, number 79, defense. And it is charged against Jacob Green, encroachment. An offensive lineman is offsides, that's offsides, or illegal procedure. Defensive lineman, it's encroachment. He can't go into that area laterally from the football, and he gets off a little bit early, probably about two seconds before even Hogaboom planned on getting moving. Got a big jump for sure. Jacob Green's had a very good long career here in Seattle. He plays inside on the nickel rush, outside. He's, he's a real quality star in this NFL. Third down, and nearly five. Hogaboom, got a man, Ernie Jones uh, for a first down, Phoenix to the 
five yard line. Wayne Harper on the coverage. Hogaboom looks intense. He's enjoying himself. He's having a good time here. He checks his checks that list there on his on his wrist. Here you see Jones at the top of your screen, just at the very edge. Just runs down here. They push the defensive back deep. He just runs a little curl, and Hogaboom hits him very nicely. He turns up field, marginal, almost a face mask there on the on the Seattle defensive back Jenkins. First down inside the 35. Stump Mitchell hit at the line by Bosworth. A helmet came off on the collision, and it was uh, Mitchell's helmet. And you know you've been hit when you lose your hat. The, bro the boss is the kind of guy that he loves to scrape. He loves to run against a big physical offensive line like this. You'd want to th think that the Phoenix Cardinals want to come after him right at him. And Brian Bosworth, they're in a 3-4. He's a little shifted over. He just scrapes right behind the nose guard and says, give me that hit. He wanted the head to come with it. He didn't plan just the helmet to come <laughs> off. He wanted the skull, everything. Second and six, Mitchell again. Another flag down. We've had a bunch here early on. And a preliminary holding signal against the Phoenix Cardinals. Nash and Porter made the hit on Mitchell, who has been taking his lumps here as the primary running back in the absence of Farrell. Well, you're running here. Gene Stallings is conferring with Tom Tupa, number 19, who he really... Holding, 24, offense. Still Coach, second down. Coach Stallings feels that Tom Tupa is probably his most improved player from about mid-preseason on. He's very comfortable if it should ever come up, and he has to use Tupa. He'd love to put him in. He says he's got no problem with using this backup quarterback. Plus, he's a backup punter, too. How many times has that ever happened? Yeah, he's a handy guy. They have been impressed with uh, his development. Well, a fifth penalty for the Cardinals and two against Seattle. And we've still got 314 to go here in the first period. Hogaboom with time to Smith. Close to the 16 yard line. The ball comes loose. But I believe it had already been whistled dead. Eugene Robinson. But the uh, hit on him, the ball popped up, but he was ruled stopped already. I think what we're seeing is the Phoenix, the Phoenix Cardinals are pushing Seattle off. They're very aggressive in the front seven. They're bringing, bringing blitzes. They're stunning. They're moving, and they're clearing out the underneath. And they're just dragging J.T. Smith across here. Jenkins is trying to stay with him. Johnny Johnson tries to hit him. Uh, great play by J.T. Smith. Once, once you catch the ball like that, you got to go. Gary Hogaboom is carving up the Seattle Seahawks defense, and it's something Seattle can't have. They've got to start getting after him. Hogaboom, six of seven, goes to the corner to Green. Is he inbounds? No. Did not have possession, according to the official on the sideline. And Green is protesting. I had a good grip on that ball, but it's ruled otherwise incomplete. To be effective, Seattle has to get after that gentleman, Gary Hogaboom. You've got to get in his face. Roy Green here in the bottom right of your screen, one of the best receivers in the league and shows why. Great timing pattern. Leaps up here. He's going to be dragging in. There's one foot. There's a second foot. Clearly, he's in bounds. Clearly, there's no doubt. Here we'll see it from another angle. One, two. Seems, well, maybe at the end there, he's to maybe be juggling that ball. The referee had a little bit better angle direct, looking directly at him on the sideline. Gene Stallings is not happy with it at all, <laughs> as you might expect. Do you think he thought it was a catch, Tim? He's a little <laughs> bit upset. I think so. <laughs> you know Roy Green thinks so. And there's the replay officials taking a look at it. Replay official Grover Clemmer and communicator Jim Knoll having a look at it from all the angles. So, you know, I think uh, uh, Green, uh, the way it appeared to me, was it looked like he had the ball caught firmly on his chest. And they are reviewing it. And, and then he, he just took it off his chest. Let's see it again. He got it on his pads right here, squeezing. Now I think he's just taking it into his hands as he looks down at the sideline. See how he kind of extends the ball out? I mean, it appeared to me, Randy, that he had control of the ball. He had, he had both hands on that ball at all time. I agree with you. He pinned it against his chest and then brought it out. That's an instinctive reaction. Receivers want to get that ball and tuck it under their arm. Well, sure, he was hoping maybe he could still make the turn into the end zone. He was right at the one-yard line. Dave Parry, the side judge, made the call. Number 64, and... Uh, so, the ball is 
alive on the half-inch yard line, the reversal. Pat Haggerty says the reversal comes from the replay booth, and so it'll be at the one-yard line, and that'll be a first down for the Cardinals at the Seattle one. There he saying, is. Wasn't I in the end zone? He <laughs> wants it all. <laughs> He says, not just the catch, I was in. I was in. He's not smiling like he was after that first touchdown. It's a great, great case. A little bit of a stumble there by, by Melvin Jenkins. Good timing pattern. He's got it against his chest. First foot, second foot, he's in. Sorry, Roy, it was not a touchdown. He's going to go right up to the ref right here and say, how could that not be a catch? That's a catch. I was in. Touchdown. Put your arms up. First and goal from the one and first time that the noisy Seahawk fans get involved. Touchdown. Stump, uh, Tony Jordan, number 32. Jordan, the second-year man from Kansas State. And the Cardinals widen their lead here early. Still in the first period. Anytime you're in that part of the, that part of the field, a coach like Gene Stallings, He's going to teach a defensive team to root down under, underneath that offensive line. But Coach Stallings' offensive line is a big group of boys. We're talking 318, 270, I mean, uh, not 270, 280, 280, 310, 318. 270 is pretty big to most of us, you know, Coach, Randy. That's big to most of us. <laughs> I played at 275 my last season. I was undersized. Del Greco for the point after. And this one, uh, he nails through without mishap. And so the Cardinals have jumped into the lead here with 2.16 still to play in the first quarter, 13 to nothing. Well, let's take kind of an offensive lineman's view of this whole thing. You get down there on the ground, you're down inside the pit, as they call it, and there the charge of the Seattle defense did not get in the backfield, and it made it easy work on that in that case for Tony Jordan at 6'2", 220. He just bowled his way over. Todd Pete and Louise Sharp on the left side of the Cardinal offensive line, opening the hole for Tony Jordan. You know, poor, but, poor little, poor little Louise Sharp, 6'4". They list him at 260. I'm, I'm sorry, Louise, you haven't been 260 since the eighth grade picnic. <laughs> I mean, he's significantly bigger than that. Now, uh, Gene Stallings angry at something here. Not sure what. I don't see a, a penalty being uh, assessed on the kickoff. And uh, he certainly won the argument vis-a-vis -vis the uh, catch by Roy Green, but still some jawing going on. But this man is certainly more concerned. He's down by 13. You know, Chuck Knox counts on this crowd. You know, a lot has been made of the noise rule and whatnot. I don't really make much of that in a situation like this. It's 13 to nothing. What's the best way to shut up? Probably one of the loudest crowds in the NFL. Get on them. Jump on them. Make these people think about where they're going to go at halftime. They have a hot dog. They're going to have a beer. What's going to be going on? At this moment, the crowd is not even going to be close to a factor. El Greco. Kickoff is short coming down at the 10. Jefferson to the 26-yard line. So Seattle will start first and 10 from there, trailing 13 to zip. Novacek on the tackle. Well, we'd like to welcome those of you who've been watching the Philadelphia-Washington game. What a game indeed. The Eagles coming from behind to win it 42-37. to Tim Ryan and Randy Cross here at the Kingdome where the Cardinals have jumped on the Seattle Seahawks here in the first period. They've just scored their second touchdown of the game and lead 13 to nothing. 2.07 to go in the first quarter. Craig. Complete off the right side to Brian Blades. And it'll be just short of the first down yardage. Well, let's see where they spot it. No, it will be a first down on the spot. Cedric Mack on the coverage made the tackle. That is a typical Seattle offensive play. They're not greedy. They're not a team that's going to go for bomb after bomb. They'll take those 10, 12, 15 yard, 15 yard passes and be, be very happy running the ball at a four yard, five yard play. Just the second possession for the Seahawks here with less than two minutes to go in the period. Cardinals used up 5.49 on the last drive. Kurt Warner, hard running, out the left side for about eight. Kurt Bob Warner. Sadler tripped him up. Kurt Warner looks sharp today. He looks quick. He's moving. You know, he had that knee scoped, and things were, uh, things were a little iffy for him. They were, weren't really quite sure. And Tim McDonald, we just saw on the screen number 46, 
for the for the Phoenix Cardinals taking the taking the signals and Kurt Warner last year in 88 over a thousand yards he's a tough guy and he's really got to be happy with the fact that he has got somebody back there to help him out and John L. Williams at fullback. Now it's Blocker Williams in addition to being a good pass receiver and a runner. Second and three. Warner again and he'll be short of the first down by about a yard. Ken Harvey on the tackle. But certainly what's happened here offensively in this first period has been a combination of the things Stallings hoped for. One was to use up some clock time. They've had the ball most of the quarter. And that, of course, keeps his injured defense off the field. But secondly, they've been able to pass against the Seahawks secondary. And Roy Green, you could tell, as you said earlier, Randy, he was loaded for bear coming in here. They've got two new cornerbacks in Jenkins and Harper. And they had difficulty last week against the Eagles. And Green and Smith have burned them so far. Third down and about a yard and a half. Warner cuts it back inside and it'll be close. Rookie Jim Waller made the tackle number 66. Sean Knight in on it as well. Making his uh, first appearance out there number 75 just acquired because of the injuries to that uh, defensive front. And secondary of the Cardinals. They're going to measure. It's very close. Five seconds remaining in the first quarter. There's Sean Knight, who was a former a number one choice of the New Orleans Saints. Cardinals saying uh, the Seahawks didn't make it. And uh, they get some agreement. And the officials. And the punting unit is coming on for Seattle. The ball is at their own 42-yard line, almost at the 42. And the crowd uh, booing, uh, obviously wanting them to go for it, but there's still three quarters of this game to be played. So Chuck Knox is going to kick it away. At least uh, he's got the punting unit on the field. Craig hasn't had much opportunity in this uh, first quarter to uh, get the... Seattle offense underway. They'll have to punt now. As they'll walk it around and do it the other way as we've reached the end of the first quarter at the Kingdom in Seattle with the Cardinals leading 13 to nothing. Tim Ryan and Randy Cross back here at the uh, Kingdom in Seattle where the Phoenix Cardinals a surprising 13 to zip lead after the first period. And uh, you can see that uh, it's been a hot hogaboom. Seven of eight, 148 yards. And Phoenix has had the ball much of this game so far. And the Seahawks offense just hasn't had an opportunity to respond. And they are punting now, having been stopped just short of a first down and Rodriguez punts it down to the 15 yard line about a three yard return by Sikahema 40 yard punt for Rodriguez Darren Como on the tackle and we'll be back at the Kingdom in a moment 
Tim Ryan with former 49er Randy Cross here at the Kingdom in Seattle. 13 to nothing, 14.52 to go here in the first half. And there is Neil Lomax in an unfamiliar position, one he doesn't like at all. Eighth rated all time NFL passer, but he's up in the booth with the Cardinals staff. He's on a phone downstairs to Tom Tupa. He can talk to Hogaboom when he comes off the field and discuss uh, things with him. Hogaboom is doing just fine, thank you. Seven of eight. Jesse Clark has come into the backfield of the Cardinals at fullback, joining Stump Mitchell there. Clark number 34. Cardinals there just sort of sort of mushed the ball up there behind their their big left side. Their big left. look at number 64, Pete right there. Todd Pete, 6'2, 318 pounds. And you, everybody realizes you lie a little bit about your weight in the program because he could be bigger than that. <laughs> The wide bodies they call themselves. Missing TD Robbins today. Jesse Clark picks up another four yards. It'll leave third and about two. Clark, a former Green Bay Packer, was cut and re signed just last week by the Cardinals and getting some playing time. Gene Stalling says, I love this guy because he gives you such effort. You know exactly what you're going to get from him is uh, all out all the time. And, and a good team man. And he's the perfect kind of back to run behind this offensive line. This line is not a quick trapping group. It's a line that's going to mush and move. And Jesse Clark is not shy about cutting the ball up there. It's third and a long one for the Cardinals working the ground now. This is what they wanted to do at the outset of the game. Clark diving for what should be another Cardinal first down. Jacob Green made the tackle. There's, there's Steve Largent in the in the red checkered shirt there with the glasses on with the injury he of the injured injured right elbow the all time NFL leader receptions and yardage and he's one touchdown behind Don Hudson from Green Bay and they expect him to be back just about the time I guess they're publicizing six ten weeks but it's a slow healing process and he can't come back to that ready on first down Hogaboom airing it out for Green overthrown. Harper on the coverage number 29. At least they're not making Largent uh, work. They've got they put Lomax to work here because he's, he's not coming back at all. So Largent's uh, getting vacation time there. I say Lomax is a real real valuable guy to this Cardinal team. He's great to have Gary Hogeboom bounce things off of working with the coordinator working with Tom Tupa. Tupa is really his special project. He's worked with Tupa before practice during practice after practice and Neil Lomax made a point to tell us that this is going to be a good quarterback. He made another point. I'm coming back next year. I want to play in the NFL. And not to mention their newest uh, rookie quarterback, uh, Tim Rosenbach. Supplemental uh, draft pick number one in the Washington State. Second and ten. Ogaboom to J.T. Smith, and he should have first down yardage. He does at the 40 yard line. Melvin Jenkins on the coverage. So the pattern, similar to a week ago, the cornerbacks. Jenkins and Harper the two new corners of the Seahawks are being punished today by Gary Hogaboom. That's right. You've got to give a lot of credit to Lewis Sharp Todd Pete Derek Kennard Lance Smith and rookie Joe Wolf up front for the Cardinals. They're keeping the Seahawk team away from Hogaboom. If a quarterback like Hogaboom doesn't get flinching isn't afraid of a pass rush. He's got all ability in the world to pick you apart. The flag down as Mitchell brings it to the right side. Picked up about six, but the flag came early. Harper drove him out. The illegal procedure signal against the Cardinals. There's a close look at a wide body. It, actually, he's wide in several directions. I, I think, I think wide, just, wide just covers it. <laughs> That's right. You know, he's, he's standing there. You know, look at him next to the rest of those guys. Derek Kennard, keep in mind number 70. Derek Kennard, the center, fine center for Illegal the Illegal motion, number 34, offense. Derek Kennard is 310 pounds, and he looks like, he looks like Todd Pete's little brother. <laughs> Jesse Clark was illegally in motion. Ray Hogeboom told us uh, he sure likes uh, coming up, though, to get the ball from... The big backside of Kennard here. Is that these guys are huge and they play with a lot of enthusiasm and have a lot of fun. Taking a snap from a chest of drawers. <laughs> Tuck Mitchell on the pitch out. Stripping through the blockers was Wyman and Porter right behind him. 
Seattle's got to start changing things up. Obviously, what they went into the game plan maybe might have been to blitz this gentleman. Wyman, number 92, brings Bosworth scraping in behind piles as we saw earlier. Earlier, Phoenix has adjusted. What Seattle is trying is not working. There's Dave Wyman turns to Bosworth and says, was well, this going to work? What are we going to do? They've got to make things happen. They've got to get pressure on Hogaboom, and they've got to start standing these big offensive linemen up at the line of scrimmage. Second down. Hogaboom again with protection, and it is intercepted on a deflection. Johnny Johnson. And that brings the crowd alive. Jesse Clark, the intended receiver, the ball popped off his fingertips right into Johnson's hands. Just when you say they got to make something happen, Phoenix made it happen for him. Jesse Clark, ball bounces off him. That's where a veteran's going to be. He's right there in the middle. Johnny Johnson, a lot of years with the Rams. Nice return run by Johnny Johnson. That's making something happen, and that's going to make coordinator Tom Catlin happy. We'll be right back. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross at the Kingdom. The Seahawks have just picked off a Hogaboom pass on a deflection. And Dave Craig is working now inside Phoenix territory at the 44. Play action fake. Wide open is Blades. Carter after him. First down, Seahawks at the 15-yard line of Phoenix, a 29-yard pass play. Benny Blay, or <laughs> Blay, <Blade, laughs> Benny's brother Brian. Benny's brother, brother, brother Brian out of Miami. Dave Craig gets great protection, hits Blades. Blades is the burner. He's got great running instincts, and he just heads back up the middle of the field where he knows there's no bodies there. Freddie Joe Nunn, great job of pursuing down the field by a defensive lineman. One setback now for the Seahawks. Cardinal 15. John L. Williams. Close to the five yard line. Running behind Millard and Wilson. Well, you see John L. Williams run. It's not a real stylish type of running style. He gets some real good blocks. He's going to move out here to the right. He's got everybody out there in front of him making nice blocks. Good block by Andy Heck pulling on the counter play that Washington has made famous. And you don't need a whole lot of style to run behind blocks like that. Great run. Zordich and McDonald put the stop on him. Second and a yard for a first down. One, 17. Williams again. To about the two yard line. Driven out by Cedric Mack, number 47. Seattle is definitely Put it, make, trying to make a point here. They're running the ball. They're moving the ball. They've got a little bit of confidence back. Heck, Dave Craig, what is he, two for two so far passing? They've got to establish, as they said early yesterday, they've got to establish that, that running game. As of right now, Phoenix, look at that, right on line with what Gene Stallings wanted to do. He said 35 to 37 minutes. At this pace, he'll easily make that. Well, Seattle into this possession had it from just 6.39. So they have uh, not really had much of an offensive opportunity. Warner, loss on the play. Freddie Joe Nunn with the first contact. And behind him, the linebacker, Garth Jacks, number 53. Jacks, a former Cowboy, playing as a backup to Ken Harvey. Looks like a cyborg. Got the black, the black elbow pads on there, the reflective shield on his face. You know, this is the area of the field. If you have defensive personnel missing, you'd expect it to show here. They've had a couple of plays now. They're playing this very, very well. They're pursuing, they're hitting off those blocks, and they're getting after the Seattle, uh, Seattle offense. I'd look for a pass here, go into the end zone. Seattle needs to get to the two yard line for a first down. Williams knocked out of bounds at about the, uh, well, right at the two. Anthony Bell, number 55, is excited. He got in there, got a good hit on John L. Williams. Ilya Jaroschuk and Anthony Bell on the hit. It is third and goal. Let me correct that. They had left the stick, but it is third and goal. 
And the ball is spotted uh, closer to the four yard line, just between the three and the four. Three wide receivers, and now in motion, Skansky starts back to the ball and then reverses. After Skansky, touchdown. He had to run a long way for a three-yard touchdown because he started out wide, went in motion back to the ball, and then reversed his field, went the other way. The whole theory on doing something like that, Tim, is you put a guy in motion, you bring him back, you try to confuse the defensive back, and then basically it's a foot race to the corner of the end zone, and the key there is getting an accurate pass from the quarterback, and Dave Craig made a beautiful throw. And Norm Johnson for the point after, and the Seahawks back in the football game. It is good. Forty three yards in six plays. And there's the man Paul Scanzi's 100. Career catch. You saw him just come into the motion from the left hand side. He just dragged right straight across get into the end zone. Score your touchdown. Great pass Dave Craig. We'll be back Phoenix on top by six. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross back at the Kingdome where the Seattle Seahawks have just scored for the first time. And trail 13 to 7. Norm Johnson to kick it off. Sikahema and Jones, the deep men, high kickoff as usual. Sikahema from the three. Out of bounds at about the 22 yard line flags upfield so no doubt a blocking infraction Patrick Hunter forced him out of bounds. Got a flag field first half. Pat Haggerty will have the call. Holding number 50 on the run back first down. And the penalty is against Ilya Jaroschuk. We'll return to the Kingdome in a moment. This NFL game summary is sponsored by City Court because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross back here at the Kingdome, and so far it's been a passing show by Hogaboom. Eight of 11, 159 yards, and a touchdown, Randy. And Craig's three of three. The difference is he just hasn't been out there because Phoenix has had the ball and they lead the game 13 to 7. Uh, the, that block extra point is going to start looming bigger and bigger. This is the classic example of a team that can control the ball, really control a football game. You only have to let a couple plays get out of your get out of your reach. And Seattle's very much in this. They're not out of this ball game. This is going to be a very tight game. Well, and you've got a, a kind of a coach who will not let his team collapse at all. And he won't try the dramatic big play stuff. He'll try to stay with the game plan. Chuck Knox and the Seahawks, but they've got to get the ball back from the Cardinals. First down at the Phoenix 10 yard line. Stump Mitchell. Forced out of bounds by Jenkins after a pickup of about seven yards for Stump. His ninth carry of the afternoon. Philadelphia, an incredible comeback over Washington. Atlanta held off Dallas. Cleveland, big winner again today. Cincinnati beating up the Steelers, who lost badly last week in a shutout. Kansas City, a winner. Miami over New England. Look at this, Green Bay over the Saints, an upset. Bears lead Minnesota by a touchdown. Second down and three. And they're trying to get the wave going here in the kingdom. Flags again. Trying to get this crowd excited. Once again, jumping offside, but think I believe it was Robert Ewald, number 80. Roll start, number 80. There's Ewald, number 80. Great hands. He catches the ball. Reminds me of Russ Francis when he does, but unfortunately, he's not catching the ball here. 
He's in the process, just about to jump offside. Left hand side of your screen, right hand side of your screen at the top there. Jumps offside, gets belted in the face. You can see him rise up out of his three point stance. Getting a false start call, and the wave is underway in Seattle. And Hogaboom will have to raise the level of his voice. Finds Roy Green. Green, a nice move away from Harper, has a first down, Phoenix. <laughs> Much was made in the preseason about Rod Perry, the defensive back coach for the Seahawks, bringing a new bump and run style to the Seahawks. We haven't seen any of that today. These guys are playing soft. You're going you're gonna to tell me J.T. Smith and Roy Green aren't going to make 7, 8, 10 yards every time Hogaboom wants to turn and throw the ball off. they got to get up there in this guy's face. Look at this. There's 10 yards from Green to the cornerback, uh, Dwayne. I'm sorry, Dwayne Harper, he just flips it out there and says, go ahead, Roy, try to run with it. Well, there's no kind uh, way to say that they are murdering these two cornerbacks so far in this first half. Stump Mitchell, hard running by Mitchell. About eight yards on the pickup. And some little extra activity on the sideline. Rosworth is in the, in the middle of it, along with a couple of Cardinals. Well, if nothing else, Brian will talk to you in that situation. Notice he's on the outside of that pile. He's not leaping into the middle of that thing. There's a little frustration showing here. This is a team in the, in the Cardinals. They're pushing. They're running. You know, we talked about the, the, the cornerbacks playing off the ball. Gene Stallings made the point last night. If they give us that much room, we're going to have Hogamim do it. Now we get a good idea of the little the punching. Nobody likes to be pushed around. Stump Mitchell starts running, running. Bosworth has his face. There it is. Bosworth, heck, he had his hand up in Stump Mitchell's face mask. And J.T. Smith didn't think, didn't like it. That should have been a penalty out of bounds. Well, meanwhile, the Cardinals pick up another first down over the 40-yard line. Mitchell has been the workhorse on the ground. And Hogaboom uh, throwing to Smith and Green against the two cornerbacks of Seattle. The Seattle, the, offense. the Seattle Seahawks are looking for a more aggressive play out of this guy right here, Brian Bosworth, number 55. Tom Flores, the general manager, says, we're not trying to trade him. We've just told him, you're a third-year linebacker. You better start playing like it. You're supposed to be a star in this league. Well, Bosworth uh, definitely feeling some pressure here to perform. Ron Wolfley picks up five yards, another flag down. Mitchell has carried 11 times for 40 yards. Ron Wolfley... Uh, has not uh, been used a whole lot running the ball, but there's a holding call against Phoenix. Bosworth and Wyman were in on that tackle. In my opinion, Brian Bosworth would be the perfect 46, that Eagle Buddy Ryan type defense linebacker. He's great sideline to sideline. I never played against a guy quicker than that. I couldn't catch him. He's a guy that can run. He tackles well. If he has a weakness, it's at the point that you, you can run at him. You can go after Brian Bosworth. Robert A. Walt picks up another penalty, this time for holding, and, and two offside. You never like to see that happen to anybody, mainly because it can distract you from your game. Here's A. Walt, and uh, I'm sure Dean Stallings going to have a word or two for him when they are next on the sideline. Gary Hogaboom. So far having himself a fine afternoon. Smith in motion. Mitchell. Picks up about five. The Seahawks shut that down effectively, though. Did not uh, play it as a pass play despite the long yardage needed. They were looking for run and made the stop. Darren Miller's in for Wyman. Now Wyman coming back onto the field, number 92, starting inside linebacker with, with uh, Bosworth. The ex-Stanford player uh, coming off. Knee must, surgery. Bosworth gets a rest. Must be Bosworth's time turn for a drink of water. They're going to trade back and forth. So Darren Miller is the other uh, inside linebacker. He's going to replace either Bosworth or Wyman. Second down and 14 required for the Cardinals from the shotgun. Hokaboom finds Roy Green. He dropped the ball on a good hit from Jenkins, and the Seahawks have it. James Jefferson recovered the ball. A hit was made by Melvin Jenkins on Roy Green. We're going to get a replay here, and Roy Green will be the receiver in motion. Number 81, 
And this goes to show you, even the veterans, even a veteran having a good day, can make a mistake. Roy Green's going to come across. He's going to come cut across the defense here. They're doing what they've been doing all day. They get him the ball. He bobbles it a little bit. Great timing right there by Melvin Jenkins. He hit him just as he turned around and didn't expect the hit. So with 5.53 to go in the first half, it is Seahawks. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross at the Kingdom. NFL football on CBS. The Seahawks have just made their second interception, and David Craig going back against the grain. Tight end Robert Tyler. Good pursuit by the Cardinals to prevent that from being a bigger gain. Robert Tyler at tight end is, gives the Seattle Seahawks something in Coach Knox's opinion they haven't had in a while. He gives them some speed. And w maybe with their older tight ends, they wouldn't have done that. Knox likes a little mix-up, and he really appreciates the fact that he's getting some real burning out of that tight end. Robert Tyler can move for a big fella. Turns into a five-yard pickup. Second down, just outside the 40-yard line. John L. Williams, he's got a big hole off right tackle. And Harvey on the stop. Looks like he has first down yardage at the 35. So the Cardinals who jumped into an early 13 to nothing lead had one uh, point after blocked. And then have uh, suffered the interception and nine penalties have hurt them. Uh, otherwise, uh, they would have continued to dominate this first half. Instead, the Seahawks trailing 13 to 7 find themselves in uh, good shape here as they take a measurement on this play and it is a first down <laughs> Minnesota is now tied with the Bears at 7 Indianapolis on top of the Rams 17 to 10 Eric Dickerson day at <laughs> <laughs> I don't think John Robinson had a welcome cake for him on his stool when he got that locker room. First down. For the Seahawks at the 35 of Phoenix. Double tight ends in. Blocking for Williams. Williams gets to the 30-yard line. Driven out there by Carter and Harvey. That's two plays in a row with that. That counter play where you bring your backside offensive lineman, you pull them around, you have them lead the back. And Seattle hadn't run that much in the past. Quarterback Dave Craig said, we've always had it in, but we haven't used it much. Now that they've got two running backs that can run it out at any set with John L. Williams, number 32, and Kurt Warner, 28, it's been a great addition to this offense. Second down and five in the 30. Set back. Williams, and he has the ball. This time stacked up right at the line of scrimmage for little, if any, gain. Anthony Bell first to meet him there, number 58. Well, next Saturday on CBS, uh, number one ranked Notre Dame and Michigan State at 2.30 Eastern time. What a show yesterday. The Fighting Irish and uh, Michigan, the number two ranked team beginning their season. You know that I uh, do uh, enjoy watching them win, Randy, as my <laughs> old alma mater. How about Rocket Raghi Ishmael? That's some kind of a player. Isn't he, he is incredible. I mean, this is the year of a no Heisman leader. Has a returner ever really won it all by himself while playing on offense? I don't know, but two kickoff returns, long ones for touchdowns, 88, 92 yards yesterday. So he'll try against Michigan State next Saturday here on CBS. Craig just missed. Connecting with uh, Lewis Clark. Really rifled that ball and was just off the fingertips of Clark, number 84. So it leaves fourth down. Seattle did something, I mean, uh, Phoenix did something a little unusual. They brought Carter in, number 41. The bottom left of your screen came in on a blitz, put the ball right there. The ball got there a little faster, I really think, than Lewis Clark thought it would. He did. Didn't have the timing down, didn't quite, wasn't able to grab it. And that's one of the points Dave Craig said. He doesn't have the timing in the sink yet with his receivers now that Largent's gone. Clark and Largent spot today. So Johnson will attempt from the 38-yard line. 48-yard attempt. And Johnson is wide to the right. So the Seahawks come up empty with 3.50 to go. 
here in the first half of play at the Kingdom. Phoenix on top, 13 to 7. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross back here in the Kingdom. 13 to 7. The Cardinals lead it. They went on top early in the game and had a 13 to nothing lead before Seattle came back. And we have 350 to play here in the first half. Cardinal ball at the own 30. Gary Hogeboom has had himself a good first half. So is this man, Stump Mitchell. And Mitchell with a second effort turns it into nearly a five-yard gain. Back here at the uh, King Dome in Seattle where a sellout crowd has not had a whole lot to cheer about yet, although the Seahawks have gotten themselves back into it, Randy, and uh, trail only by six. That block point after, as you pointed out, could still loom very large. To this point, Gary Hogeboom's quarterbacking, Stump Mitchell's running well, the receivers are catching the ball. What's kept Seattle in this game is the mistakes and penalties that the Cardinals have, have gotten. And they, they can't blame anybody but themselves for any of those. Hogeboom wanting to change it up here. Wolfley and Mitchell shift to a pro set. Hogeboom going for Green deep. Overthrown. Green had run by Harper, the cornerback. 32-year-old Roy Green has still got some jets. He's got fun. He had a great comment yesterday about J.T. Smith. We were giving him a bad time about being an older receiver. He says, older, look at J.T. Smith. He goes, heck, I had his football card when I was 12 years old, when Sammy <laughs> Baugh was throwing to him. <laughs> he was in very good humor. Roy Green, who uh, the last time he played the Seahawks, had four touchdown catches. Today, uh, he's not doing so badly for the first half. Jefferson and Hunter have come in to give the Seahawks six defensive backs now on this third down. Ogaboom gets time, deep sideline for Novacek and incomplete. Jefferson had the coverage on Novacek. And the Cardinals will have to punt, so here you have a situation where the, the Seahawks will have the ball back with about two and a half minutes uh, to play in the first half trailing only by six two and a half minutes to a veteran quarterback like Dave Craig especially in his home stadium where they're at least a touchdown better than probably anywhere else they play two and a half minutes is <laughs> that's plenty of time he can score from way out that much time Camarillo's first punt high arching punt fair catch signaled by Jefferson and the Seahawks will start from their own 19-yard line when we return to the Kingdom. Phoenix leading 13 to 7. 2:45 still to go in the first half. There we go. There he is, Roy Green, 81. J.T. Smith. Are they trading football cards? You figure right there. Roy's going. Look, I got three of yours. I'll trade you those for a couple of Neil Lomaxes. <laughs> That's my blast off. Smith had 10 catches last week. And so far, it's been kind of Roy Green today, uh, today although uh, Smith has contributed. Two veterans who are certainly uh, as good as anybody left. There's a serious Seahawks fan there. Can't see much of the game, but people are seeing him. First down, Seattle. A lot of time to work for Craig and company. Craig takes off, dives in, trying to get the first down. And let's see where they spot it. He'll be close. There's a lot of quarterbacks out there that probably have more physical ability than Dave Craig. Dave Craig kind of mirrors Chuck Knox. He's a tough competitor. He's a leader, and he's a guy that the Seahawks offense really, really believes in. He's Chuck Knox's kind of quarterback. And he does get the first down at the 29-yard line. Complete, rolling out, finds Warner. We mentioned a little bit earlier about what this Dave Craig can do with the ball when he gets it late in the game like this. It's a perfect situation for him. He is a real veteran. 
He's getting some, and he's getting some good, good protection right now. Andy Heck, right here, right in the right of your screen, number 66. It's supposed to be a big pressure situation. He's not supposed to be able to handle this kind of a thing. Great job right there. He pushes Sadler upfield and around the quarterback, and Craig steps up and makes the completion. Ron Mattis was a holdout during training camp, so the number one pick, Andy Heck, got a chance to play some and won the uh, starting role. And he says he plans to keep it. Intended up the middle for the fullback Williams and McDonald was waiting for it there along with number 53 Garth Jacks. That's a play we watched the uh, Seahawks practice and trying to circle Williams into the middle but the Cardinals were prepared. We'll be right back at the two minute warning. Riding down Fifth Avenue or running down Fifth Avenue. I know which one I'd choose. I'd, I'd opt for the nice soft seat in the car. You'd be in the Mercedes, huh? That's right. That's well, right. Steve, Steve Cott and uh, Steve Scott, rather, and Abdi Bile from Somalia uh, head up the field. And the women's uh, field, Patty Sue Plummer and uh, Paula Ivan from Romania. And that's at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time. And we've had uh, discussion between referee Pat Haggerty and uh, the timekeeper, evidently. Uh, so... The clock may be off a little bit on the scoreboard. We haven't had any official announcement yet. Maybe Haggerty will let us know. We, we had 157 when we uh, left you for the two minute warning. Let's see if they uh, alter the clock at all. He was just taking his order for lunch. Didn't Good, say yeah, much right. of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was the caterer. That, you may be right. <laughs> So it's third down, four wide receivers, Clark, Blade, Scanzi, and Kane for the Seahawks. Craig with time and in and out of the hands of number 84, Lewis Clark, and a flag down, probably a hold, and slow to get up is Dave Craig. You see it in that situation, it's either going to be a hold or roughing the passer, because they were coming after Dave Craig. This, this is a tough place. It is holding against the Seahawks. This is this is a tough place as a visitor to really get going late in a game like this. They're lucky. Holding offense number 66 declined fourth down. So the Seahawks will have to kick it away. Punting unit comes on, and their two-minute drill never really got on track. Number one pick out of Notre Dame, Andy Hick, Heck, number 66, was guilty of holding that time. I tell you what, Chuck Knox would rather see him take a holding penalty than let a guy like Harvey, number 56 for, for Phoenix, free on his quarterback and taking a good shot on him, though. Ruben Rodriguez into punt, standing at his own 20. Heaton and his Sikahama at the 25-yard line of the Cardinals. And the left-footed punter nails a good one back in. Sikahama up inside his 20. Flag down on the play as he got to the 26-yard line on the return. Darren Como on the tackle, a 47-yarder for Rodriguez. Illegal hands, number 38 on the return. So penalty on the return to number 38 of the Cardinals. Michael Zordich, the starting free safety is playing there in place of Lonnie Young who's out for several weeks with a shoulder injury and they back it up to the 10 yard line well shortly we'll be going to the NFL today Brent Nerd with scores and highlights of all of the entertaining action that we've passed along you score wise uh, here today it sounds like it's been quite an interesting afternoon in the National Football League it hasn't been boring I tell you what that used to be one of my favorite shows pregame we watch that in the locker room at Candlestick Park every morning for a game. 10 penalties taken by the uh, Cardinals in the first half. And they it looked like the Seahawks were trying to take a timeout. Time out. Seattle, number one. And they do. So we have 142 still to play here in the first half. Phoenix on top. We're back at the King Dome. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross and somewhat frustrated Chuck Knox, I would think, uh, the way this game has gone for him. The, Cardinals with penalties and a couple of miscues have given them some opportunities, Randy, but they haven't been able to take advantage, and they still trail by six. 
Yeah, you know, pr prudent thinking at this point, Tim, with a minute 42 left, would say Gene Stallings there wants to run the ball, wants to get this clock done with and get in the locker room Leading with his lead. Now, a lot of the times, remember Bart Starr years ago would go up top in a situation like this. You get them lulled away, you think they're going to run, and you go along. Gary Hogaboom still kind of breaking in as the Cardinals quarterback. Wolfley spins his way for about five yards out to the 15. And Hogaboom, as you pointed out, still has uh, the, the plays on his on his wrist there. They haven't given him the entire offense. Of course, Gene said, well, we don't use our entire offense in any one game anyway. But it's clear that, that Hogaboom, uh, still a new quarterback here, is, doesn't have a full grasp of everything. Not quite yet. You know, the, the, there's more than just plays to an offense. Gary's got to, he's got to memorize formations and motions and certain adjustments against certain defenses he sees in his first read here. And he'll make an audible like you see him screaming. That could be an audible. And he's sure throwing the ball well. 10 of 15 to this point. Mitchell runs into traffic. And Jacob Green, number 79, and is driven back but maybe a yard with forward progress. They weren't fooling anybody coming out in the shotgun right there. You know, Gary Hogeboom last night made a comment to us that we have we really have certain tendencies by formation. A team can look at us and they say it's gonna be a run. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go there. You know, they came out there in the shotgun and said, gee guys, we're gonna pass. They went for the run instead. They're trying to mix things up and give people a different look. Now I want to say when he takes his hat off that this has been bothering me since yesterday. Is he a dead ringer for H.R. Haldeman or not? <laughs> Gary Hogaboom. There's Chuck Knox talking to Rusty Tillman. Rusty, one of the tougher coaches, was one of the tougher players, but now one of the tougher coaches. And there's Gary Hogaboom. He have the, the unique hairdo. I, be, I bet he had himself a heck of a crew cut there for training camp when this whole thing started about six, seven <laughs> weeks back. But conferring with Jim Schaffner, you can just see him down in the lower right-hand corner. Jim Schaffner is with the 49ers, is with the Cowboys for years, with Gene Stallings. He's one of the real, one of the true offensive minds in the game that I think a lot of fans wouldn't really know him by name, but he has been a guy with a lot of very, very successful offensive programs. So H.R. Hogaboom has gone back to the field here. We've got 53 seconds remaining in the first half. A half-hearted wave trying to get started here. Look at this, Chicago's taking a three-point lead on a field goal over Minnesota. And a quick look at some of the other finals. Brent Nerve will bring you fully up to date in about a minute's time. Mitchell. Close to first down yardage to the 20. The clock still running with 44 seconds and counting down. Driven out by Johnny Johnson. So the Cardinals have uh, moved it out to their 20 yard line. Well, obviously, the Cardinals have chosen to run this clock out, and Hogaboom's job at this point is to keep this team in the huddle for as long as possible without taking a penalty. Right now, there's 20 seconds on the 30-second clock. He'll walk his guys up nice and relaxed, keep them in their stances for a little while, and then go with it and try to run all the time off he can. Yeah, we've got a, a whistle here that uh, is an official stoppage of play. And another conference with the timekeeper. They keep the uh, stopwatch over there, and it, there must be some discrepancy between the scoreboard and the uh, and the handheld time. But uh, we haven't seen any changes on the scoreboard as yet. And you can see they're working their uh, watches and clocks over there. Now they've, uh, well, now they've knocked off considerable amount of time here from 33 seconds when it was stopped down to 18. Should have been counting, I think, from the time Mitchell went out of bounds, and, and it, uh, it wasn't. Now it's ticking down. Cardinals just want to get to the locker room here. At this point, the Cardinals don't have to come out of the huddle. They can stay right where they are, turn around, run down to the end of the field, and get themselves a nice cold drink and have a seat. Well, the Seahawks still very much in this game, and it looked in the beginning like the Cardinals might roll over them. But we have only a six point deficit at halftime. So Gene Stallings happy to be ahead, but I'm sure unhappy that they weren't able to take greater advantage of their opportunities to, to widen the lead. They hurt themselves. With some penalties, a turnover or two, a fumble and a, an interception. But uh, you can see Phoenix with 276 yards dominated the actual play during the first half. Green and Smith working on the young cornerbacks of the Seahawks catching eight passes between them 
and producing a Phoenix touchdown. So at halftime here at the Kingdom, the Phoenix Cardinals 13, the Seattle Seahawks 7. Stay with us for more NFL on CBS. Back at the Kingdom in Seattle, where the Phoenix Cardinals lead this interconference game 13 to 7. Tim Ryan and Randy Cross here at the Kingdom. And Randy, uh, really, that six point uh, differential is a little bit misleading because Phoenix, the way they started this game, looked like they might turn it into a runaway. When well, you look at the total yards, 280 some yards for the Phoenix Cardinals, it's a little deceiving. Seattle has really controlled this game in the second quarter. The, the, the onus is on them. It's their game to win at this point. They have got the momentum. They've got to come in this second half, and they've got to figure we're going to throttle this Phoenix the Phoenix offense down and they can move the ball against the Phoenix Cardinal defense. Well when you look at the uh, time of possession and the statistics in the game it's uh, been an odd first half really because uh, as, as you pointed out Gene Stallings uh, wanted to have the uh, Phoenix Cardinals have the ball for about 35 minutes. Well they had it for 17 they could have had it for more. Easy, easily and this is what Gene Stallings wanted 35 to 37 they're right on you don't figure in the interceptions you don't figure in the fact you're going to have it that long you're going to get a tip pass for an interception Gary Hogeboom 10 of 15 179 yards for his touchdown and interceptions having a good day but the mistakes are coming back really to bite them look at that 10 penalties uh, along with the interception and the fumble that really slowed the Cardinals however from the Seahawks point of view uh, they're only six points down they got 30 minutes of football and the home crowd still to work with Seattle has always been a very opportunistic team. You let the Seattle Seahawks stay in a game going into the second half, no matter how much you're dominating, if they've got life, they can come back and beat you at any time, especially here in the kingdom. All right, our CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross at the Kingdom in Seattle, where the Phoenix Cardinals have a six point lead as we begin the second half. Chuck Knox uh, at least only six points down. Randy has the opportunity to stay with the game plan that he brought in unlike last week when they got way behind Philadelphia. Exactly and he's also got the ball here starting off in the second half. It's it's best case scenario for him. He can get Dave Craig and the offense right out on the field. Al Del Greco's kickoff. Taken by the rookie Harris at the two yard line. Elroy Harris and a flag we have had a whole lot of flags as he got to the 19 yard line Garth Jacks made the hit Darth Jacks Garth Jacks maybe it's Darth <laughs> Looks like yeah, Darth right. Jacks. yeah he does. <laughs> holding number 52 on the return that is ML Johnson linebacker who was uh, charged with holding on the return. That can be a real momentum killer to start off a second half. You expect to get the ball on the 20, 25 yard line. All of a sudden now, bang, you're starting from the 10. Uh, at least they're at home. They don't have to deal with the noise factor here in the kingdom. Dave Craig will try to get the uh, Seahawks offense that they had planned for this game underway. They're down only by six. That block point after. Looking bigger uh, every minute as the game goes by. And we're just underway in the second half. From the I formation, Warner got it out to the 13. And Kurt Warner uh, didn't want to talk about his injured knee. The knee he had operated on previously had to uh, have a scope on it uh, just a few weeks ago, and uh, just flat out said he'd rather not talk about it. And I think that's because he doesn't want to think about it himself. He says it feels good, and uh, he wants to be a hard slashing runner without having any. Any of that in his mind. I can tell you from personal experience. There's John Becker, offensive coordinator from Seattle. I can tell you from personal experience. You get an injury like that, you don't want to hear about it. You think about it enough. You know your legs hurt. So you don't need to hear from a reporter every day. So a four-yard pickup for Warner, and Craig will throw deep drop. In and out of the hands of Lewis Clark. It may be that Cedric Mack got a hand on the ball just as it arrived. Number 47. But we've seen two go through the fingertips of Lewis Clark, and he is the man trying to fill the shoes of Steve Largen. I'm sure he knows he can't fill Largen's shoes, but he's got to play his position. Lewis Clark just runs across a little post pattern here, 
and he just misses he just pretty much misses the ball it's pretty inexcusable just like the first the first one went right through his hands he just didn't adjust properly to the ball yep the replay would uh, indicate that Randy it didn't look like uh, Mac was able to get a hand on it so it is third down four wide receivers deep for Clark and incomplete on the coverage, Tim McDonald, the safety. And Clark hurt as he went out of bounds in an attempt to catch the ball, holding his left knee. Now the Seahawks can ill afford this injury. As they're already undermanned with a loss of large at wide receiver. They just now to just now today activated number 88 Willie Willie Boyer off the developmental squad. So you don't want to see this happen to anybody. Lewis Clark, especially here on this turf. Great play by Tim McDonald. Knocks the ball away. You can just catch your leg. When you get on this Astro turf, just a little tweak of your leg can do can do a lot of things to your body. Rodriguez just gets it away from the two-yard line. And it goes out of bounds inside Seahawk territory at the 41-yard line. This is not how Chuck Knox had it scripted in the locker room to come out and attack this, attack this Phoenix team. You know, Rodriguez last year against the 49ers in the preseason had a three-yard punt. He punted it up in the air. It caught on the infield, bit back for about, bit back about 25, 30 yards. Well, he's been punting well in the preseason, and uh, last week, as we see Lewis Clark getting attention on the sideline, but that was a 28-yarder from Rodriguez. So Phoenix has the football, first down at the 41 of Seattle. Mitchell. Hard hit at the corner. Second effort got him about four. He was met by Glasgow and Jacob Green. Nesby Glasgow picked up right about where he was in the first half, coming up on these runs and filling well against Stump Mitchell and the Cardinals. But if this is what Phoenix would like to do right here, they're close enough to be very, very patient. They don't have to go for a home run right away. They can pound, pound this defense and probe it a little bit and see how far off the ball these card these these Seahawks are going to play. If they're going to be off the ball as far as they are right now at seven, eight yards, you got to throw it to the wide receiver. Mitchell out rushing the Seattle team so far. This time it's Ron Wolfley, number 24, for a first down. The fans aren't too crazy about that, and they notice the fact that Ron Wolfley's not a running back that's going to make too many people miss. I mean, in fact, Ron Wolfley, being the kind of guy he is, he might go after him. Look, at you won't see a, a, a kingdom crowd quite this quiet. And they're, they're, most, they're mostly back onto the field, and Bosworth leaving the field here with an arm, with an arm injury, going to go, go to the trainer or the equipment man to have a little something looked at. He got kind of a mixed response from the crowd when he went off, too. First down. Quick flare out to Roy Green, and good job on it by Melvin Jenkins. Got about a four-yard gain on it. But again, I think the point that you made earlier is that they're not really playing right up here and challenging on any bump and run. You know, you give you give a quarterback like Gary Hogeboom with these sorts of wide receiver, wide receivers, seven, eight, nine, ten yards on a on a cushion for a cornerback. Granted, the guy's not going to beat you deep, but they'll eat you alive up inside. Ryan Bosworth getting some attention on the sidelines. So the Seahawks suddenly in injury problems. Offense Clark and defense Bosworth. Second down. Good rush, but a good play from Hogerman to Smith. Touchdown. J.T. Smith from Gary Hogerboom, a 25-yard strike. Gary Hogerboom is having some fun out there. J.T. Smith and Roy Green won't be talking about retirement anytime soon. They're getting younger legs as this game goes on. I'd say they came up. Seattle Seahawks showed blitz. The corners came up and played like tough, like they're going to give them bump and run, and then ran back at the last minute, gave them that cushion, and J.T. Smith just put a couple moves on. Del Greco with Hogaboom holding a flag down. The kick was good. They're real lucky that didn't get blocked. They almost got it off the left-hand side of the screen there. Come around the corner, almost blocked that one too. Let's side, see what the call was. defense, point is good. 
That may have been why it was offside against the Seahawks. They got a little extra run at it. Johnny Johnson apparently the man who uh, came in early. Well some uh, discussion down there by the officials disregard the foul. The point is good. Well, either way the point's good. Is that Rosanna Rosanna Dana used to say never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the touchdown once again. You see, you see how cornerbacks get up here tight. They're coming with a blitz. They're coming after Hogaboom. Just a nice play by J.T. Smith. He just sees, feels the two bodies around him, and he goes where they aren't. And Johnny Johnny Johnson cannot can't run him down. Nor can Melvin Jenkins, who is having himself a nightmarish afternoon. We'll be back. at the Emerald City in Puget Sound. We're in the city of Seattle at the Kingdom, where the Cardinals lead the Seattle Seahawks 20 to 7 here in the third period. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross and we watch the Seahawks trying to get it started here starting only six points down. First Bosworth went off and then Lewis Clark went off injured and then suddenly a short punt of 28 yards giving Phoenix an opportunity to score again and score they did. Hogaboom to J.T. Smith from 25 yards out. Well now perhaps the Seahawks have to go out of the game plan start to throw the ball a little bit more like last week against the Eagles. We turn out to the 26 yard line uh, the 22 yard line by James Jefferson and yet another flag down on the kickoff return and a preliminary holding signal against Seattle. So once more Randy. Uh, the Seahawks set themselves back. They've kind of picked up uh, the slack for, for, the, for the Cardinals not getting the penalties. Holding number 91 on the return, first down. You, you can't keep getting these penalties as Seattle did. Phoenix did it in the first half. But I tell you, the story so far of what we've had has got to be Roy Green and J.T. Smith. They've had one of those afternoons. They had great weeks last week, and these two guys are killed. These three guys, there's Gary Hogaboom, number five, just walking out of the screen. They are killing this, this uh, Seattle Seahawks defense, and they're being played off of. They love this kind of a day. Last week, between them, 12 catches, 155 yards. So far today, 10 catches, 184 yards. Scanzi for a first down, Seattle, out over the 30-yard line to the 31. Well, that gets a rise out of the crowd. 12th man, the crowd here in Seattle, a very important part of this team's success. And they haven't had much to cheer about so far. Scanji's so, a gutsy little receiver. Gets out there, takes it. Carl Carter gets a hand on him and stands him up. And here comes Ken Harvey. Great shot right under the chin. Completely legal. And it's kind of a good thing to see if you're a defensive coach. You'd love to see those young, aggressive linebackers. Paul Scanzi, 28-year-old, seven-year veteran out of the University of Washington. Huskies big winners yesterday over Purdue right here in Seattle. Greg. Brings it out for John L. Williams. Good coverage there by Carter. Our statistician Dick Bossing was not pleased with the uh, Purdue score yesterday. In fact, I think he waited to come in to work for us today until after the game was over. <laughs> we haven't mentioned that score to him today. Only the Notre Dame score. Far be it from us to rub that in. <laughs> you know, John L. Williams, we mentioned earlier about the fact that Seattle thought he was a, the best all around fullback in the league. It's surprising a guy that size is that good a receiver. He didn't show it on that play, but he can really get out there over the middle of the field and be a serious threat. Second down, eight. From the pro set, a straight drop from. Craig and he's got his man blades first down Seattle into Phoenix territory at the 46 yard line. That's great to see a quarterback run down there give him a guy a high five slap him on the helmet offensive linemen see things like that happen they get excited you know Dave Craig can get these guys pumped up he's the type of a leader that can get them excited two two touchdowns is not a big deal great throw he threw right down there. Brian Blaze just went down for that ball and got it. You know, it's a big difference. Last year in college, he wouldn't have to worry. Two years ago in college, he wouldn't have to worry about getting up. Eric Kill on the tackle, but he's now uh, left the game. He was hurt earlier and came back to play. Craig, play action. Get some time, and it is blocked at the line of scrimmage. 
It was Rod Sadler, number 72, got a hand on the ball. And Andy Heck tried to make a catch on the deflection. But you're not talking about two uh, nimble hands, but we did see the ball pop out. I tell you what, they'd rather have the incompletion. It's a loss of four yards on the play. I didn't think he had the ball. Second down, 14. Slot right this time. Craig to the near side, complete. Stanzi, first down, Seahawks. Dave Craig has found a few soft spots of his own on the corners of the Cardinals defense now. We've been watching the Cardinals attack Seattle's defensive backs, and Dave Craig happens to have seen something, obviously, at halftime that they feel they can take advantage of. Carl Carter, the victim on that one. And a great timing pattern. Scanzi just turns it straight upfield, and Carl Carter drags him down. Obviously, they're getting a little bit of the room that we're seeing the Seattle Seahawks cornerbacks give them. And Carl Carter's got to tighten it up right now in a little bit better man-to-man -man defense against Scanzi. Seven consecutive passes. So the Seahawks, forced to throw here, are doing it effectively. Play action again. A lot of time. Double coverage on Brian Blades. Craig threw it away. It's a smart veteran type of a play by Dave Craig to let it go. He knew he couldn't complete it. And we're seeing some very good patience on the, ha on the, on the part of the Seattle Seahawks. They're not behind by 13 points saying, I'm going to bomb it down the field. I'm going to get it going. They're being very patient. They're taking their 10, their 12, their 6-yard passes. And their receivers are turning them into a little extra yardage. See some scores there as Brian Bosworth apparently has a sore shoulder, is expected to return. You can see him kind of shaking it out. And the word on Lewis Clark, a knee strain. We don't know if he'll be back. Second and ten. Play action again. Intended for Blades incomplete. Tight coverage on him that time by Cedric Mack. Mack Blades complained about it. There's no call. That ball also looked like it might have been uncatchable. At times like that, there's 60,000 referees in the stadium. <laughs> you bet. Especially when you're down 20 to 7. We saw Brian, Brian Bosworth on the sideline kind of shaking his arm like that and moving it up and down. A lot of times, linebackers and defensive and offensive linemen get pinched nerves in your neck, and that will run down into your arms, and it deprives you a lot of your strength, specifically in your hand and in the lateral muscles in your arms. It enables you to lift them. Bosworth, uh, I'm sure, hoping to get back on the field after he sees his team in the end zone. Craig. Shifting to the shotgun on third down. Scanzi. Touchdown. Say what you will about David Craig. He is a winner. He makes things happen. And he didn't become one of the highest rated quarterbacks in the history of the NFL just by happening to be up in this offense and doing adequately well. This guy is not flashy. He just does enough to get the ball into the end zone. I love what his quarterback, Coach Ken Meyer, says about Dave Craig. He says he can play cards. <laughs> <laughs> he can. He says some quarterbacks can play cards and other quarterbacks can't play cards. Craig can. Thompson gets the point after. So, folks, we got ourselves a serious ball game here. Scanzi's the inside man in the slot. Comes in motion here, number 82. Seattle likes to spin things off in a nickel situation like this off of their inside receivers in the slots. This was not the case. David Craig was scrambling around, saw Paul Scanzi uh, open, and just dumped the ball over the defender's head. 7.59 to go in the third quarter. It is now 20 to 14. Tim Ryan with former Pro Bowl 49er Randy Cross and we've just watched the uh, Seahawks close the gap 20 to 14 now the Phoenix lead Thompson will kick it off Seattle to our right in their home blue Cardinals to our left in white they led early 13 to nothing in this game high short kickoff at the 10 Ernie Jones. Slips through to the 26 yard line of Phoenix. And the hot Pogaboom brings on the offense. Elroy Harris making the tackle for the Seahawks on the kickoff return. 
Hogaboom 12 of 17 208 yards and two touchdowns. And you can see him talking to his guys there. He's not giving them the play. He's saying, come on, let's get some more points. We can move the ball. I'm sure uh, it's words to that effect. It has to be. You know, this is the team looking to him for the leadership. It's been Neil Lomax for a lot of years. Gary Hogaboom has to assert himself. The crowd alive. Mitchell. Mitchell bursts through. His initial start, Randy's got to be one of the best in football. For the first two or three steps, he's as quick as anybody. I don't care. Eric Dickerson, Roger Craig, pick a back. He's the guy that gets off the blocks, and it gives him an opportunity to get in there and see what's happening. This big offensive line just pushes these guys back. Great block by Pete on, by Pete right there on Joe Nash. He just mushed him. Bosworth and Robinson made the tackle. Mitchell up to 89 yards on the day, second and three. Mitchell forced to cut it back and gets the first down. Started wide, brought it back when he saw the traffic out there. And picks up the first down. Mitchell a little slow to get up. Bosworth made the tackle. A little hurt on Mitchell. Now remember, Earl Farrell is on the sidelines with an ankle injury suffered last week. And these Cardinals, who so far have played well despite their many injuries, Maybe have suffered another one here. He's got 95 yards on 19 carries. And Mitchell will be headed to the sidelines. So we have a timeout on the field with seven minutes to play in the third. Phoenix by six. Well, they're making some serious noise here in the kingdom. And there's an idea at decibel levels. When it hurts your ears, folks, is at 125 on the meter. The Kingdom, usually with a crowd like this, is 120 plus. But we're keeping track of it here. At zero there is 110. So they're pushing the outer limits here. J.T. Smith trying to quiet them down. Picks up six to the 45. Jenkins on the coverage made the tackle, number 24. Now, here's what happens uh, under the new rule imposed this year. Uh, if the home crowd gets out of hand, and this most of the time will happen down near the goal line, at risk of loss of timeout to the defensive team, and ultimately the possibility of losing five yards. Second down and five. Quick flare to Smith. And immediately, as Jenkins tightens it up over there, two consecutive plays. Gain of about three for an NFL update. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Can you hear me, Tim? <laughs> All right, here it is. The New York Giants, Phil Simms, will go to Odessa Turner. More on the Odessa file as he steps into the end zone. And the Giants have taken the lead going to the fourth. Back to Tim. Thank you, Brent. Well, this is the noisiest it's been in the game. These fans realizing their team now very much in it. Three tight ends in on third and short. Wolfley for the first down. Phoenix to midfield. Ron Wolfley playing for the injured Earl Farrell. And Tony Jordan is in there for the injured Stump Mitchell, who left just a couple of plays ago. You get in a must situation like that in a short yardage, you got to know they're going to run behind Derek Kennard at center, Todd Pete at the left guard, number 64, and Louis Sharp, number 67. Ron Wolfley seems to be a little bit, probably got a little wind knocked out of him when he landed on the ball there after he dove over that pile. Now they're running out of bodies. That'll bring Jesse Clark in. The injury report on Mitchell is a bruised thigh. Wolfley looks like he's sore all over. Mitchell, meanwhile, is back out there. First down. For Green, incomplete. Patrick Hunter, number 23, had the coverage on him. Eugene Robinson, the safety helping out. That was more of a case of a, a poor pass, one of the few Gary Hogeboom's thrown today. More than a, a more of a case of a poor, poorly thrown pass than really, really good defense. Gary didn't put the ball where Roy had had any chance of catching it. Now Mitchell is limping off again for the Cardinals. He gave it a try with a bruised thigh. And he's come to the sideline. Hunter, meanwhile, has replaced Wayne Harper at left corner. 
for Seattle. Harper's had all kinds of problems today covering Roy Green particularly. Jordan, good hit on him. Nesby Glasgow right at the line of scrimmage. Nesby Glasgow can play cards too. He likes to get up there and hit. He can do it. I like watching him. You know, we watch we watched Stump Mitchell come off the field a few seconds ago with that, that bruised thigh. When, when somebody bruises the thigh, especially in a large muscle like that, all that really is is bleeding starts in that muscle. And you get all the tightness. Once that thing starts tightening up, there's usually very little you can do to bring that back. Mitchell was approaching the 100-yard mark, and they had to leave the game. Six defensive backs in on third and 10 for Seattle. Boom! complete to Smith for the first down and a flag thrown. That was a clutch pass and catch from Hogaboom to J.T. Smith. Now they had to come out of their shotgun presumably because of the noise. Defensive pass interference, number 29, first down at the spot. Great, great cool on the part of Gary Hogaboom. Comes back. There, he's getting good pressure. They're coming after him. They're coming up field. He stands right in there and fires that ball, ball over to Roy Green. And you just see Harper come in right before the catch. And at first, initially, look, it might have been a face mask, but he hits him well before the ball arrived. And it was great concentration. Well, Harper turned into uh, a nickel back in that situation. Uh, and he winds up with a mistake. Hogaboom on the bootleg. First down, Phoenix to the 25 yard line. After that last catch, J.T. Smith's up to 104 yards. You know, Gary Bo Hogaboom, you love to see a quarterback be fiery, go out on the bootleg and run. But for those of you to remember, a couple of years ago, down in Miami against the Dolphins, Gary Hogaboom was scrambling on a long run of maybe 20, 30 yards and was slammed on the sideline, separated his shoulder, and he missed the rest of that year. So I'm sure Gene Stallings would not like to see him do that on a regular basis. What a day Hogaboom is having, along with his receivers, Smith and Green. 31-year-old veteran, Gary Hogaboom. This is Jordan for a couple. Como, the linebacker, coming up to help. Tony Jordan, number 32. Wolfley's injury report, a shoulder. Don't know whether he'll be back. This is a banged-up Cardinals team with a very intense effort that they're giving here in this football game. They have every excuse not to play well today. They haven't taken any of the excuses. They're playing a good, emotional, physical game. They're making a few mistakes, but they're not letting that really hold them back either. They're on the way for more points now. How about opening on the road your first three games of the year? Uh, Second and almost nine. Hogaboom, good protection again to Ewald. Good hit on him immediately from Glasgow. He picked up about four. Now let's take a quick look at the action that preceded us on the NFL on CBS today. This was the thriller today. Philadelphia coming from way back to pull it out. Look at the numbers on Cunningham. Atlanta over Dallas. The Cowboys take their second loss under Jimmy Johnson. Cleveland, their second win, beating the Jets. Cincinnati bouncing back from last week, beating up on the Steelers who've lost two. And Kansas City over the Raiders. Miami, mild upset over New England. And Green Bay, a big upset over the Saints by a point. Minnesota Chicago we'll get to that one again third down and five that is Jesse Clark blasting through to the 10 yard line for a first down Cardinals the Cardinals caught the Seahawks that time in an over shifted 3 4 by that I mean they take the outside linebacker move him in over the tackle you see 97 Porter Jacob Green great block back by Kennard number 70 gets Jacob Green going backwards Oh, that's nice. You love to see that as a coach. You open up huge gaping holes like that for your running backs. Makes your running backs look good, too. But look at the size of that line and the job they're doing. The first guy you mentioned was the center. I noticed that. Kennard was ob obviously responsible for that big hole. This is Clark again down to the five-yard line. Here's the third string fullback who was cut and re-signed. And he's out there going well. Number 34, Jesse Clark. The Cardinals are mixing this up very well. They're falling right along with Gene Stallings' game plan. He wants to have control of the ball. They're running the ball effectively. They're throwing it judiciously. They're not going crazy trying to go downfield. They're taking what they're being offered. 
So the scores of other games still in progress along with ours. The Rams on top. Tampa Bay leading the 49ers. Whoa, club by three in the third. <laughs> oh, no. Second down. Jordan, good defensive pursuit by the Seahawks. The charge led inside by Johnson, number 52, the linebacker, and Jacob Green, number 79, and Glasgow mopped up. When you're not a big physical defense, you've got to be good at a couple things. You've got to have good quickness, and you've got to have real good lateral pursuit. And this is a good example of the lateral pursuit of the Seattle Seahawks. Great play forced by Nesby Glasgow, number 22. He comes, spins around off the block, still gets in there. Wyman gets a piece. Two, three more guys. Darren Como grabs him, throws him to the ground. Good example of near the goal line defense. They're scraping, they're hitting. Stopped him at the six. It'll leave a third down as we completed three quarters of play at the Kingdom. And it's going to go to the distance here, folks. 20 to 14, Phoenix on top. Tim Ryan and Randy Cross at the Kingdom. A big third down situation here. The Cardinals on the doorstep. The story of the game illustrated on the scoreboard. 22 first downs, Randy, by the Cardinals, but they led early 13 to zip, looked like they would roll. Here they are in a six point game. And just like Gene Stallings, 27 minutes, 13 seconds of possession. They're almost eight minutes in this drive, and they're not done yet. Big situation, obviously, for Seattle. Down by six, they've got to stop them here. Green, touchdown. They will not stop him. Almost routine Hogaboom to Green. Check that noise meter now. It's getting awful quiet here in the kingdom. Boy, great, oh boy. great execution by Gary Hogaboom in this offense. He and JT Smith and Roy Green are clicking. You know, you get into this situation, coaches love to use motion offensively. Here's Roy Green, 81, coming at your screen. He's on the move. He's running. It makes sense. Somebody trying to cover him is going from a standstill start. You're not going to stay with him one-on-one -on -one when he's got a running start at you. It's an amazing thing. Roy Green, another touchdown, following up on another great day last week, having a fine one today. El Greco for the point after. He's got it. And the crippled Phoenix Cardinals have widened their lead. 27 to 14, 14.52 to play. Tim Ryan with Randy Cross at the Kingdom where the Phoenix Cardinals trying to win their second game in two starts in this NFL season are looking very good right now. 27 to 14, next week they'll be in New York. Before they return home, they will have played three games on the road. And hoping for two out of three, things are looking pretty good for them. Having beat Detroit last week. On the return, this is James Jefferson. Jefferson had averaged 27 plus last week in three returns. He got out to the 26 here. Next Saturday, college football on CBS at 2:30 Eastern Time. Michigan State will be at number one Notre Dame, and uh, court, Coach uh, George Perlis. Uh, of course, without Tony Mandarich and Andre Rising now in the NFL, but they like tailback Blake Ezor and linebacker Percy Snow. They'll have their hands full with the likes of Rocket Rocky Bismail and Tony Rice next week here on CBS. Lewis Clark on the sidelines with a strained knee. Dave Craig will try to crank it up without Largent and Lewis Clark. Out of the backfield, Williams gets about three. Coming up to stop him, Carl Carter. And the linebacker, Ken Harvey. Pick up of two on the play. It'll be second and eight. Craig, 11 of 20, 139 yards and a touchdown. Big difference between Craig and Hogaboom today is that Hogaboom's uh, had the ball out there for a much longer period of time. We mentioned what a great weapon John L. Williams was, number 32. We haven't seen much of him at all today. They've done a great job on the Cardinal side of stopping him. Looks like a Cardinal offside. Craig, the blades cannot hold on, hit hard from behind after the ball that popped out of his hands. He took a shot from Michael Zordich, number 38, playing in Lonnie Young's spot. 
Looked like Clasby was the man, number 79, jumping offside. You see Dave Craig there going, well, sorry about that. It was a free play. Free play or not, wide receivers hate to get that. Tim McDonald, safety out of USC. Long tradition of this. Dennis Smith at Denver. Ronnie Lott with the 49ers. Those guys love to hit, and they're turning that way down at USC. Blades uh, was the recipient of the punishment. Penalty against the Cardinals marches it out to the 32 yard line. But you really got to. How, what more can you say about this Cardinal defense? They've got all kinds of guys out of there. I mean, Galloway uh, out with an injury. And uh, of course, the uh, safety we mentioned, Lonnie Young out of there. They're playing a rookie at middle linebacker, near Eric Hill. Sadler back playing with a bad knee. John L. Williams drips for the Seahawks first down. Out to the 37 yard line. Jim Waller, the rookie, who was in that right tackle spot, made the tackle there. You know, but Dave Craig, on the other hand, Craig has not had a bad day leading the Seattle Seahawks football team. He's been very effective. He had very little to work with really early in the game. He started on his own 11, he started on his own 10. He's very quietly but effectively, I think, leading the Seahawks team. They're by no means out of this ball game. Down by only nine points. 13-22. The play in the game and the pass intended for Robert Tyler, the first-year tight end, incomplete. Zordich on the coverage. Sorry about that. Down by 13 points. Yeah, that's a little different. They need two uh, TDs, obviously, to. Uh, to get themselves back in this, but 13 minutes is still a long time, Randy. You know, Tim McDonald said Zordich, he's a strong safety, playing playing free safety. Tim McDonald takes the, takes the signals in from the sideline. He's the one that's going to do the checkoffs if the offense shows him something different. It's it's a real load on Tim McDonald today, and it's a credit to the job that he's done. They've been very effective so far. Second and ten, Seattle. Brian Blades, first down, Seahawks in Phoenix territory at the 45. Carl Carter and Eric Hill on the tackle. And the Seahawks within the confines of this stadium have always played well. If they had a problem, it was usually on the road. Here you see Seattle 30 and 10 over the last five years. But over the same five year period, they've been 18 and 22 on the road. So obviously they're tough as heck to beat here within this kingdom. Now Brian Blades goes limping to the sideline. Seahawks receiving for having difficulty. Craig takes off and dives for the first down. He can play cards. He can pass and he can run. You know the main, re the main reason a team like this is this hard to beat in this stadium. It is a dome. The crowd gets into the game, and when the crowd is behind you as a home team, you love it. You play harder. You do a little bit extra, and this crowd can actually get more effort out of the football team. And Chuck Knox there knows that. He uses this stadium as a real tool for his team. Craig rushed three times now for 21 yards. One setback, and first down at the 35-yard line of Phoenix. Craig sideliner diving, grabbed by Skenzi, coming back well to a low-thrown ball. Pickup of about nine. We said it last time, they were doing this, the same thing, driving down the field on the Cardinals. They're showing great patience. 11 and a half minutes to go right now. Scanzi's getting that cushion that the, that the Cardinal receivers are getting. You can't give that to a receiver in, in the NFL. He just pushes the guy off. He's not within eight yards by the time he catches this ball. How much of that do you think has to do with their lead? Would they be playing tighter in a different situation in the score? I, I, I seriously would not think so. I think coaches go into the game with certain game plans, and this is part of their game plan at this part of the game. On second and two, the Cardinals stack them up. Clasby and the linebacker Anthony Bell. Shutting down uh, Warner. And uh, still a three-point margin, Chicago over Minnesota, but the Giants have opened a 10-point lead over Detroit. Houston leading San Diego, and the Rams on top of Indianapolis. Tampa Bay clinging to a three-point lead into the fourth quarter against the 49ers. You talk about playing on the road. If, if the Giants win the, the National League West, the 49ers play five of the first six on the road. That's blocked at the line of scrimmage. 
Craig tried to slip it up a passing lane that just closed up on him. Jim Waller, the rookie from UCLA, their number five choice this year, batted that down. Waller is not short on confidence. You, you read the clips coming out of Phoenix and you talk to him. He loves to play football. Look, he's got that blue stuff all over his helmet. He's been looking for helmets to bang into. He wants to come out of this looking and feeling like he's played a football game. Yeah, he's picked up a little Seahawk blue on his hat there, hasn't he? He's been banging it against <laughs> one of these blue benches. Either that or he's been hitting a lot of people. <laughs> Fourth down, the Seahawks will go for it. They need nearly three yards. Craig under pressure. Complete. First down. Brian Blades. You're seeing Dave Craig do what Dave Craig does best. He leads his team with emotion and athletic ability. He scrambles out to the left, but the key here is Brian Blades. Brian Blades pushes the defensive back off. He sees his quarterbacks in trouble. He comes back towards him. That's one of the cardinal rules of being a receiver. You always come back to your quarterback when he's in trouble. Here's Craig. Freddie Joe Nunn gives him a little pressure. Sadler gets held a little bit right there. Great job by Craig. Roland Mitchell, number 25, the man who was victimized by Blades. First down, Seahawks. On play action. Quickly out to the tight end, Tyler. He picks up about four. They're cute. Mack made the tackle. Ten minutes to play. Regulation time and ticking away. 27 to 14. The Phoenix lead. You can see uh, Craig looks a little out of breath. He's had to scramble, run, throw. But he's got his team down there at the 12-yard line of Phoenix. Plus that adrenaline's pumping. He's got to be excited about this kind of a game. It's a great football game. Setback is Williams, second and seven. <laughs> Trying to sneak up the middle, but he's buried under four white shirts, led by Clasby and Eric Hill, the rookie. Everything just sort of just sort of collapsed on him that time. He, he looked like he felt like. He had somewhere to go, but he really didn't. A great job by the by the Phoenix defensive backs. He didn't have anywhere to throw it. He figured I'll duck up right here behind Brian Millard, but they weren't having any of his. Nice job by the rush there. That that's where you see the defensive linemen filling the lanes. They did they did that so well. He didn't really have anywhere to throw the ball. To throw it away, he didn't have to throw it way up over the defensive lineman, obviously into the stands. So it's a third down. And what a big play this is. And Craig didn't like what he saw. He'll take a timeout. They've simply got to move the ball here, get it into the end zone. So Craig is going to consult with the offensive staff. 8.56 to go. 27-14, Phoenix. Back here at the Kingdome, our game summary shows that in the third down conversion department, which is very much at stake right now, Phoenix 8-9. That's great for Hogaboom. Seattle 2-8. of eight. Green and Smith, the old receivers, have had themselves quite a day, and Phoenix leads 27 to 14. And Randy talking about third downs. The big one is right now for Seattle. Oh, exactly. Chuck Knox, last week they were 2 of 12 against the Eagles. Chuck Knox says we're normally at 40%. I don't care if they're 2, two, for, two for 8 going into this. They've got to be 3 of 9. They have got to get this first down. Well, they're at the 13-yard line, and they've got four wide outs in there. Blades, Tommy Kane, Willie Boyer in his first game off the development squad, and Paul Scanzi. Clark on the sidelines with an injury. Pressure. Craig will not escape. Got it off to Williams. But he has whistled in the grass. No touchdown. The official signal that Craig was caught. Behind the line of scrimmage, third sack by Phoenix. Dave Craig is a fighter. You know he's going to try every way possible. They've got him covered. 
They're coming after him. They're blitzing him. He's going that way. He's still looking for people here. Sadler's got him. He is clearly in the possession of Mr. Sadler, number 72. He is in grasp, and he is under control. And according to the rule, that's all it needs. No six points. A great effort negated because, again, the strength and determination of Craig and a good job by Williams, but it goes for not. Play has been whistled dead. Fourth down, they'll have to go. On the 18. Four wideouts across and whistles everywhere before the ball came up. And they may have used up the clock. Yes, they did. Hey, game. Offense. So a delay of game penalty will now back them up. And the field goal unit comes on. Eight minutes and 17 seconds left. Fourth and 18. This is a good move by Chuck Knox. Bring in the kicker. Take your three points. It'll put you down by only 10 points with this much time left. The Seahawks have plenty of time. There's Becker, Dave Craig conferring there, and, and Chuck Knox. You know, Dave, Dave Craig and John Becker have had a good relationship. Obviously, you saw a little arguments going on. They both got their own opinions. Thompson connects with a 39-yard field goal. And there is still 7.55 to play. Ten points the margin here at the Kingdom. Tim Ryan and Randy Cross watching Norm Thompson, who just kicked a field goal to reduce the margin to ten. And the uh, Seahawks will have to really have a swarming, aggressive defense, Randy. They've got to get the ball back as quickly as possible, obviously. And it all starts right here with Norm Johnson. He is a very strong-legged kicker. He has the ability to get this thing up real high. He drops it in the corners about the one or two-yard line, makes you return it, and they can get you inside the 20. Thompson, another high kickoff that comes down at the goal line. Sikahema made it to the 21. Met there by three Seahawks, uh, led by Eugene Robinson, number 41. Well, next Sunday, our NFL action. It'll be hard to top what's happened today around the NFL, but we'll try. San Francisco at Philadelphia. Some of you will see that game, and <laughs> that should be a dandy. Phoenix at the Giants. And Green Bay, a winner over the Saints today, will be at Los Angeles, and that's a special start time of uh, 1 o'clock on the West Coast. And uh, the other games, 12:30 Eastern, beginning with the NFL today. Mr. Mandarich should finally be able to get into a uniform for Green Bay next week. Yep. First down, Jordan. Loose ball. Recovered. Well, looks like Seahawks. Cardinals had a shot. Seahawks appear to have come up with that ball. Exactly what Seattle needed. A quick turnover. The hit from David Wyman on Tony Jordan. Now let's see who's finally got it. Oh, they look disconsolate, the men in blue. It is Phoenix Ball. This is the kind of thing that drives a coach nuts. You know he just had that whole offense for Phoenix on the sidelines saying, we want to run the ball. You running backs, put two hands on the ball and grab on tight. I don't care if you don't get that extra yard or two by fighting. I want you to get out there and hold on to the ball and don't fumble it. Dave Wyman hits him, strips it. Ball comes right out of his hands. Now let's see who comes up with this thing. There's Clark dives on it. Clark say I Tony Woods gets it. in there. I guess I guess Clark won the tug of war. Yeah. Once you get a pile like that, everybody, the last guy to have it is the one that gets the possession, but he usually isn't the guy that had it first. <laughs> well, it was Clark, and Phoenix has the ball. Second and five. Jordan again. Make it to Clark, number 34. Jesse Clark got over the 30. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. Let's look at this again. Now we're going to see the ball come loose. A strip here, inexcusable. Backs in this situation should not fumble the ball. Now here come the guys going after it. It's booted there. By now we've Jenkins. got one guy on it. Tony Woods goes to jump on it. The ref comes in. They both got the ball, but by the time the referees got to him, it was the Phoenix ball. Third and a yard. Good hole for Jesse Clark and a first down. Running behind Pete and Sharp on the left side. 
You're with the size of these Phoenix linemen, Gene Stallings has got the luxury in this situation of really trying to beat down and wear down this, this Seattle Seahawks defense. Well, Chicago's widened its lead as a Houston in game still ongoing. Giants by 10 over Detroit. Well, you can't say enough about this battered Cardinals team on offense. Tootie Robbins is out. Farrell out with an ankle injury. Wolfley's gone out since then. Mitchell's gone out since then. And here they are grinding the ball upfield at the 35, not to mention their defense. Hey, to be honest with you too, Tim, you've got to take your hat off to Joe Wolf, number 68, the rookie right tackle. We haven't called either he or Jacob Green very often. He's got to be having a pretty good game. Jesse Clark, not much of a game, maybe a yard. He stopped by Joe Nash. Good sized fellow. Gene Stallings says, Joe Wolf on your screen there, number 68, is more. There, San Francisco 13 to 9. Oh, you Tampa. jumped on that one. <laughs> you jumped on that score. <laughs> That'd be a heck of an upset. You're talking about the, the Super Bowl champs that claim they can repeat. Joe Wolf out of Boston College, the number two pick of the Cardinals this year. For the injured Tootie Robbins, and he'll be there for at least another month. Second down and nine. Jordan, he barrels his way for about five yards. Nesby Glasgow comes up to make the hit. Now you're running into desperation time now for the Seattle Seahawks. They've got to start making things happen. We saw the we saw the ball being stripped once. Here's Wolfley having his shoulder worked on. Obviously got banged up a little bit worse than we had thought when he jumped over the pile on that short yardage situation back earlier. Third down and five for the Cardinals at their own 41. So a huge defensive situation for Seattle here. For Green. He'll score. Waltzing, touchdown, Roy Green. Ogaboom is all routine to him now. He's not even excited anymore. <laughs> you know, people have to be saying, sooner or later, Gary Hogaboom's going to mess up. He's going to throw the ball to the wrong guy. He's always done it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, maybe he doesn't do that anymore. This is a pressure situation, and he is having the game of his life. He stood up that time under a heck of a, a heck of a rush. They were blitzing from the outside. They were coming at him from the inside and, inside, and he just calmly flipped that ball up there. And there, look at Gene Stallings. He's smiling. You don't see a smile on that man's face too often. 59-yard scoring play to Roy Green. I still picture him talking with us last evening with a, a Cheshire Cat grin on his face, preparing to play this game today. He just knew that uh, he was going to have a big day, and he is the all-time Cardinal touchdown leader. And for those of you that are worried, the kick is good. And Roy Green, they did have another ball. Roy wasn't stealing everybody's ball. He wasn't going to go away. They, went, <laughs> they were able to get that one off. Del Greco with a point after. We have a replay here. Green will be at the top of your screen. Just you can't say enough about the poise of Gary Hogaboom. He cuts across here. Right about now, Hogaboom's being hit. The ball is in the air. He's laying this ball out where he figures it's going to be incomplete or Roy Green's going to get it. Perfectly laid out there for his receiver. Couldn't quite make the tackle on Roy Green there by Johnny Johnson, and he easily scores. And so it's 34 to 17, and the Cardinals appear on their way to their second victory. Cardinals kick it off, leading 34 to 17. Five yard line, Elroy Harris for the Seahawks. Legs are down as he struggles to the 23 yard line. Roy Green's third touchdown today. Six years ago, he had four against the Seahawks, the last time these two teams met. And that touchdown, the reason he lugged that ball off, of course, was because it moved him ahead of. Seven and five old. Moved him ahead of Sonny Randall as the all-time touchdown leader of the Cardinals. In just the last two games, look at those numbers. Pretty frightening. People talk about Jerry Rice and the impressive numbers that guy can put on the board. Look at this. 14 receptions, 296 yards, and seven touchdowns. That might be somebody you might want to allow for in your game plan if you're defensive coordinator, don't wow. you think? Boy, you're not kidding. 61 touchdowns in his career. Sonny Randall was, uh, of course, a brilliant receiver. This year is with the 
Cardinals. But what makes it so special is Roy Green is a great wide receiver, but he has JT Smith on the other side who's, who's playing great. You see Roy Green talking upstairs, probably to Neil Lomax, telling him, I'd have got you that ball five yards soon. <laughs> well, Craig now is passing from the end zone and gets it off to Kane, Tommy Kane, out of Syracuse, out to the 20-yard line. 3.57 to go, and they go into the early hurry up here. Neil Lomax has got to be real pleased with what he's seeing down here. I know frustrated that he can't play with that bad hip of his, but pleased with the results of Gary Hogeboom. Craig intended for Kane overthrown. It'll be second and 10 from the 20 yard line of Seattle. Roy Green was joking yesterday about, you know, Lomax, giving Lomax a bad time. You don't get me the ball enough anyway. You get upstairs and you tell him where I'm going to be. You tell Hogeboom to throw me the ball. <laughs> and uh, I guess Hogeboom's been listening to something Lomax has been saying because he's laying that ball into his hands beautifully. Well, for Craig, who has not had himself a bad day out here, but a little bit like last week where they got down 13 and uh, had to, to scramble back uphill. And as you pointed out, that's not their offensive strength. They like to control the ball from the outset, play a conservative style offense. Craig. For Blades, Blades makes a good catch at the 42 for a Seahawks first down. They'll stay in that hurry up with 329 and counting. Little side armor to Blades, and Blades has another first down with a 38 of the Cardinals. Kevin Gidry getting some time. Number 37 recently picked up from Denver. He made the tackle. <laughs> Intended for Blades. Incomplete. A flag down back at the line of scrimmage. It would appear it's going to be holding against Seattle. We know Ron Mattis in the game. Number 70 at left tackle. The rookie Andy Heck has gone most of the way for Seattle. There's a gentleman you don't want to face on a Monday morning after a bad call on Chuck Knox. He is going to be loaded for bear tomorrow. Holding, number 70, offense, still first down. And Mattis is charged with the hold. Well, in addition to all of the football activity today, uh, some important baseball action with uh, the Blue Jays over Cleveland 2-1 to one today. And Boston 7-6 to six over Oakland. Kansas City 7 to zip over Baltimore. The National League Houston 1-zip to zip and... Uh, San Francisco 5 to 3 for San Diego in the eighth inning. First down and long. Intended out there for Williams. Battered away by Anthony Bell, number 55. Linebacker showing some good speed, covering the back. Great athletic move here. Bell, Bell is a guy that's really come a long way in the last couple of years. Look at him stretch out and get that thing. You know, we had a curious situation yesterday talking to Ken Harvey. Ken Harvey says, you know, when I was a young guy, I was being taught how to do it a little bit by Bell. And Bell was helped out by E.J. Jr. It was a curious thing. You're talking about a five-year guy and a three-year guy and a two-year guy and a one-year guy, and everybody helps the younger guy come along. And at this point, everybody's helping Eric Hill, the rookie linebacker at LSU. Second down, complete. Boyer. Well, Lee Boyer gets his first NFL catch coming off to the development squad, that new uh, kind of taxi squad that they have now here in the NFL and getting his first catch. Added to the lineup with the loss of Steve Larkin. Craig takes the hit from Nunn, got the ball off, but was hit just as he released it. He saw him coming, though. He's coming from the backside. He'd never have any idea, but... Quarterbacks will tell you they'll stand in the pocket, but he knew that was coming. Look at that Chicago, 24-7 over Minnesota. And Houston, 34-14 over McMahon and company. Rams, a touchdown over Indianapolis and San Francisco. Not, that game's not over yet, I want to point out to you. You know, Ray, per Ray Perkins has got a good, young, aggressive team there at Tampa. Fourth down. Three receivers out to the right for Craig. Get some time and hits his man, Kane. 
Kane hit hard at the 17 yard line that holds on and the Seahawks threatening with 217 still to play regulation time Zordich and Mack on the tackle. They've got a score here if they want to make it interesting. There's two minutes, almost two minutes left. What a catch and what a throw. Blades to the 10-yard line. It'll leave second and about two. When we return to the Kingdome, we've reached the two-minute warning. Phoenix, 34 to 17. Cast of Murphy Brown introduce you to some of the new stars on CBS, and then a great movie, Roxanne, with Steve Martin and Daryl Hannah, parody of the Cyrano Bergerac story, and it's uh, it's really fun. So stay tuned tonight, big night on CBS. Gray intended for Stanzi, flagged down as Roland Mitchell broke it up, and well, he may be flagged for interference. Who me? I don't know. You have to see this from a different angle. From the sideline here we're on, it looks like he batted away cleanly, but all we saw was, was his right hand, which you'd have to look for was is the left hand. We're going to see it here coming up from the end zone, but first the call. Illegal contact, number 41, defense. Well, it's against uh, Robin, uh, against uh, Carter, not, uh, not Roland Mitchell, so it may have occurred prior to the actual play on the ball. So the ball is now at the five yard line. First and goal. And uh oh, Randy. My ball's cut. No comment, huh? The dangers <laughs> of repeating. 16 <laughs> 13. The Bucks by three over the champion 49ers. Craig. Another little side armor, side armor and uh, try to get it to Scanzi. Incomplete. McDonald put a lick on Scanzi. You don't relax around Tim McDonald, especially down by the goal line. Boy, he's a fine player. and What a class act. You know, yeah, he was in talking to us about uh, having to take on some extra responsibilities. A newcomer Zordich beside him, Eric Hill, a rookie in front of him. But he wasn't complaining, just, uh, you know, pointing out that, yeah, I'll be a little busier. You know, Scanzi, you'll see the ball come here. It goes out of his hands. He relaxes a little bit. Not Tim McDonald. He comes up and just loosens every buckle on that gentleman's body. Oh, Scanzi popped right back up. Don't show any pain. Second and goal. Love the way that uh, Craig can sidearm the ball through traffic over the top, and it is a touchdown. Brian Blades. McDonald on the coverage put the hit on him, but Blades hung on for the Seattle score. You mentioned it just before he threw the ball, that low sidearm throw that, that Dave Craig uses down here around the goal line area to thread things in. Listen to this impact on this touchdown. Oh man, I hope they make good armor for you guys. <laughs> oh, Brian Blades, there's a nice young guy. Isn't he though? You know, he and his brother Benny bought, his, bought their mom a big dish so she could watch him on TV back at home. Watch both games at once. Yeah. And of course, uh, his brother's playing against the Giants today. His brother playing for Detroit. So it's a 10-point margin, 145. Seahawks will need a little help here to pull this out, but stranger things have happened in the NFL. 145 remains. Dave Craig doesn't look like it's over, and you know he won't concede a thing. Next Sunday on CBS, 49ers will be at Philadelphia. Those Eagles coming from behind in a wild one to beat Washington. Phoenix will be at the Giants, their third road game in a row. They haven't been home yet. And Green Bay, winners today over the Saints, will be at the Rams. And Randy and I will be there to cover that game. Some of you will be watching that. And uh, suddenly the Packers look like they might be an interesting club. Exciting uh, Don Nikowski at quarterback and Tony Mandrich's debut appearance. You know, back, he, back here in the kingdom, Tim, the Cardinals have been part of some great comebacks, both for them and against them. Last year they came back, they were ahead of the 49ers, 23 to nothing. You worked that game with Dan Jiggets. They came back, beat them 24-23. Seattle has that kind of potential. I'm not saying that it is probable, but it is possible to come back, come from 10 points down with a minute and 45 seconds left. Oh, They're yes. going to be kicking the onside. Look at the onside kick formation for the Seahawks. 
Thompson and the ball is it loose. Zordich trying to make the catch on the hands team and I think Seattle has the ball. He took a real shot. He had the ball in his hands and as he was trying to squeeze it he was absolutely rocked. That can be a cardinal sin for a receiving guy to go through that 10 yard area. The, they can't touch the ball until it gets past 10 yards. Seattle ball. <laughs> Not sure who came up with it, but it was Zordich who had the ball in his hands and then took a real shot. Let's they kicked the ball again. from the 35 yard line. They can't touch the ball, that they being Seattle, until it gets to the 45 yard line. Now we're going to see Zordich leap across the line and go for it. I'm sorry, that's not, that is not Zordich. Yeah, that's Zordich. Is it? Yeah, 38. Okay, but leap across the line and get to it. That's a decision the receiver, receiving team has to make. Am I going to be standing here and get drilled before the ball gets there? And if I am, I've got to go get it. It's a tough call. It was Alonzo Mitz who collided with Zordich and freed up the ball, and Seattle has it. Well, this will be fun, folks. 1.45 to go. Gray, 24 of 38 passing. Out to Williams. Jay Taylor forced him out of bounds. Rookie from San Jose State. Six back in the Cardinal secondary. They've got that clock moving. They called, they didn't say he went out of bounds. Craig intended for Scanzi. That stops the clock. Little miscue there on that one, but uh, they needed the time here anyway. 120. That's the type of situation where they miss a Steve Largent. Steve Largent's got that that unspoken communication with a guy like Dave Craig. He'd have known where he was going on that play. Well, Craig will get a huddle here. 120 remaining. Those are Dave Craig numbers. 25 of 39 for 279 yards, three touchdowns, and he still gets criticized in the newspaper of not being a good enough quarterback. Craig for Kane and off the mark. Incomplete. Deep sideline intended for Tommy Kane. I mean, and it would it looks as though uh, perhaps Kane didn't run the route that Craig was expecting. Either that, Tim, or maybe he's a little disappointed in himself. Something like that. A, a, a long out pattern is a very tough throw to make. And if it's not timed perfectly as that one wasn't, it's it's near impossible to really complete. So this is it, fourth down. Well, now what do you pick here? You got to get the first down. What kind of a pattern do you expect? I think if you got a Benny Blades, you got to go to Benny Blades deep over the middle. Drag. They're in the double slot here, so they're going to have plenty of people to be cleared out. In the middle, but incomplete. They converged on Kane, Carter, and McDonald and broke it up. And it's Cardinal ball, so that's going to wind it up. And these uh, Phoenix Cardinals, uh, again, you, you just got to give them an awful lot of credit. Gene Stallings and his staff, you could tell talking to them last night, the attitude coming in despite all the injuries of a week ago, they were uh, ready to play, excited about playing, and very optimistic. And had a right to be, as it turns out. Some other finals are Rams over Indianapolis. They'll be at home against Green Bay a winner today. And the Giants over Detroit by 10 at home. And the Giants will host Phoenix next Sunday. Roy Green told us yesterday, Tim, that their goal was to be come off this three game road trip at least two and three. They wanted to win two of these three games. They felt that would be a real moral victory for them. Obviously, they're going to be at least two and three. Two Great and, job. By two out of three. Right. They're in, uh, in New York next week before they head home. You know, coming into this game, Tim, we talked about, well, oh, geez, the, the Cardinals are banged up. They're battered. You know, do they really have a chance against this Seahawk team? This man here has rallied the troops. These guys love their head coach, Gene Stallings, here talking to Jim Schaffner and a little input from Gary Hogeboom. They enjoy this guy. They play for him. I think they've got a heck of a chance against the Giants team, which, once again, you'd say they don't have a chance because they're outmanned. Maybe these guys can't be outmanned. Gene Stallings, what did he have his game face on last night? Oof. <laughs> it was yes, sir, Mr. Stallings. <laughs> 60 minutes uh, will be uh, next, and 
That's uh, for those of you in St. Louis, you will uh, see that in its entirety immediately following our NFL coverage and it'll be on at its regular time for those of you on the West Coast. Second down nine. They'll just count this off here. 103 and counting down. Gary Hogaboom. Imagine this guy out of Dallas Cowboys over to Indianapolis, uh, never a full time starter and never really uh, counted on as a guy who could be a continuing starter for anybody. Here he is uh, following Neil Lomax into this uh, Phoenix situation because of Lomax's arthritic hip and uh, what a day he has had. So I think they have every reason to be excited down there in the desert. You could tell just by his demeanor last night in the meeting when we talked to him, Tim, he's gaining more and more confidence all the time. A quarterback, that's very, very important that he feels from the guys around him that they believe in him. And it's very obvious from today, from the way this line's playing for, playing for him and the way these receivers go after the ball, they like Gary Hogan. Third down, will use up another few seconds and they might get one more snap here. Chuck Knox uh, got to be not just disappointed, but a little bit concerned. I mean, it is a long season, the NFL, 16 games, but you know, you got off to an 0-2 start in a competitive division. They won last year with a 9-7 and record. That wasn't exactly mowing everybody down, so uh, he's got to be a little concerned now as they, uh, as they are 0-2 here at the beginning of the year. Well, if he didn't like to talk after being blown out by a, a team many people picked to win the Super Bowl, Philadelphia, he sure is not going to like it after being beat by a beaten up Phoenix Cardinal team. And just to hear, just he'll hear this number a lot. Coach Knox, do you know that no team has ever won the Super Bowl when they went 0-2 in their first game? Mm. Mm. Fourth down, 12 seconds. And uh, they took the delay there, and that's going to do it. Offense. So the Phoenix uh, Cardinals will leave here uh, some happy dudes going on to New York. Uh, presumably they get to go home in between. <laughs> they might <laughs> let them sleep in their own beds a couple of nights. And there's, num be, there's number one happy dude right there. Gary right. They'll be playing football in New York and that Arizona flag they're wearing on their jerseys this year uh, will be waving proudly when they finally get home because they'll be going home with a winning record no matter what happens next week in New York. Well, they did get one more snap of the ball. And Craig, uh, Ron Wolfley got to make it. Jesse Clark got to run it. So that's it, a final score. Well, they stopped the clock with three seconds. Was that four down? It was a change of possession, so... Actually, there's three seconds left. How do you concede gracefully in this situation, Randy? I mean, do you, do you right say now, forget right, the whole thing? Right now, Chuck Knox would take those three seconds off the clock and get in there and get off the field. Now the Seahawks are going to take their play here with three seconds left. At this point, you hope nobody gets hurt. Either coach right here is saying, Please, we're going to throw this thing up for grabs. I like this going for the score, though. That, that's good. I like that. It's picked off inside the five-yard line by McDonald. But uh, the Seahawks went down flinging. And Gene Stallings got to go out of here. Very happy football coach. For Randy Cross, this is Tim Ryan saying so long from the kingdom with a final score. Phoenix 34, Seattle 24. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League from the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington.